that we get to get started? Yeah. Uh, please take notice that action will be taken on the following items at the regular council meeting on Tuesday, February 28, 2023, in the council chambers of Sparta Township Municipal Building, 65 Main Street, Sparta, New Jersey. <clears throat> meeting is called to order at 7 o'clock. The regular meeting will begin at 7.30. Adequate notice of this meeting was provided to the public and the press on January 6, 2023 by delivering to the press and posting on the township website a copy of the notice. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Lay. Here. Council Member Quinn. Here. Deputy Mayor Clark. Here. Council Member Kirkpatrick. Here. Mayor Giroux. I'm here. Um, I'm going to now read this into executive session. We'll hold off on the salute until we get to the, um, the regular meeting. Uh, so whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231 PL 1975, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas this public body is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, now therefore be it resolved by the Sparta, uh, Township Council of the Township of Sparta, County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, as follows. The public shall be excluded from a discussion of an action upon here and after specified subject matters. The general nature of the subject matter to be discussed is as follows. Litigation, personnel, contract negotiations, miscellaneous legal advice it is anticipated that at this time that the above stated subject matter will be public when deemed appropriate. Can I have a motion to take us into executive session? I'll make a motion. May I have a second, please? Second the motion. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, and out of our recess, so um, uh, for the public's sake, can we uh, can the clerk please call the roll again? Here. 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 Uh, can you join us in the so to the flag? Um, first on the agenda is uh, approval of the minutes. So may I have a motion to approve the January 5th reorganization minutes as presented? I'll make a motion to approve them as presented. May I have a second? I second the motion to approve the minutes as presented. Okay. Is there any discussion? All right. Uh, can I have a... Um, uh, all those in favor of approving minutes say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Okay, uh, we consider the minutes approved. Um, will the acting town manager uh, please present a manager's report? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, first, the Public Works Department. Um, the road division had its first significant snow event last night into ap this afternoon, making it uh, number seven for the season. Um, during the mild, milder weather, the roads division has been crack sealing roadways, um, most recent on Park Lake, uh, Skyland Drive, and uh, Grandview Drive. <coughs> Public Works and the Parks Department are working together on tree cleaning and site work for the new access path and area um, off of Holland Circle up on Sparta Glen. Um, the public's, public works personnel continue to inspect road conditions uh, where the gas company has installed the new lines. Most recent are Cherry Tree, West Cherry Tree, and Shuri Lane. Um, utility department, reminder that the first quarter water and sewer bills are due on March 15th. If the customers have not received their utility bills, they can contact the utility office to obtain a copy. Um, Sparta's utility director, Phil Spalby, had decided to retire from the township on April 1st after 28 years of public service. He expresses gratitude to, 
Township Council for their continued cooperation during his time serving for Sparta Township. He also thanks the many customers, contractors, vendors, staff members that have helped make this time here successful and rewarding. Um, Parks Department winter program registration continues through the current <clears throat> brochure taking programs through April. Uh, the second session of most winter programs are at full capacity. Day camp registration begins on March 1st for residents. The Recreation Department is accepting employment applications for lifeguard, counselors, and day camp director. Construction Department. The department has issued 289 permits for various work throughout the township, which is a moderate pace. Some new construction is included in this number, but most projects are renovations and alterations, and they appreciate new projects breaking ground or anticipate new projects breaking ground by mid spring. Um, police Department. The police department has completed the renovation of their gym. The expansion allows for more police personnel to work on their physical health and mental wellness, which is vital in maintaining healthy officers. The expansion also allows for the attorney general mandated training in areas such as CPR refreshers, as well as defensive and elastic elastication tactic training. Um, all the costs with the improvements were paid for by the FOP and the labor was provided by Gene Donnelly Buildings and Ground uh, and staff who did an excellent job and the department thanks them for their hard work. Um, this February officer Page the Walt took the position as Township's new school, re <clears throat> school resource officer for Sparta <coughs> Public Schools. Officer DeWalt previously had three years of experience with the NETCOM Police Department and her strong work ethic is approachable and personality will be a character, uh, will be perfect character for this position. The department has seen an increase in DWI arrest for the month of February. They would like to remind the public that buzz driving is drunk driving and urge individuals who have consumed alcohol to be responsible in designating a driver to reach their designation. Sparta officers are constantly enforcing motor vehicle violations and receive numerous calls from concerned citizens who witness motorists driving erratically and possibly impaired. They encourage concerned citizens to contact the police dispatch immediately via 911 if they feel they observed an impaired driver. This uh, concludes my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Sam. May I have a motion to approve the manager's report as was presented? I'll make a motion to approve the manager's report. May I have a second, please? I second the motion to approve the manager's report. That's any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? All right. The manager's report is considered approved. Uh, we now have an open public session for any items not on the agenda. If anyone wants to talk about anything not on the agenda? <clears throat> Brook Drive. I have an observation and a suggestion about something that is not directly related to something on the agenda, but it's about the snow removal schedule <coughs> excuse me, in Sparta. So it is indirectly related to the bond ordinance, but it is really about the snow removal schedule. Um, when Mr. Uh, uh, Zepp talked about the need for a new uh, salt barn, he mentioned that he expanded the snow removal schedule with several new roads in town and that the old facility was just, you know, 
uh, do for uh, renewal. But I would like to observe that there are several roads in Sparta that are excluded from the snow removal schedule, and those are the smaller roads in Sparta Lake, maybe elsewhere in township also, but Sparta Lake has two larger roads that do get treated, and a number of smaller roads, my own road included, that are not part of the uh, snow schedule. Um, my road, Brook Drive, is not a driveway, but it is a one-lane private road, but it's a legally open road. Um, but I'm paying for my own uh, snow removal. Now that there's going to be this bond for 2.2 million with a life of 15 years, it seems to me that I'll be paying for somebody else's snow removal and not getting any benefit of that myself. And so what I would like to suggest is that the um, Department of Public Works look, or that you look into if the snow removal schedule can be expanded to roads that are not currently included in the schedule. Um, the roads in Sparta Lake, the smaller roads, do require a more specialist type of snow removal, and that's been done by private contractors at cost sometimes at $2,000 a year, depending on what kind of winter it is. Um, seems to me that with a 15-year bond, in my case, I will be paying for somebody else's snow removal when I'm in my, in my 80s on a fixed income. Um, so it seems to me that now that we are taking on this additional financial obligation that gets paid for by us, the residents, that if there's any kind of uh, covenant that precludes our roads from being plowed at this point, that that be looked into and that our roads are included in the schedule. Um, when I moved here, I just accepted the, the, the situation as it was. But now that we've taken on an additional cost, it seems to me it would be a good time to look into this to include all of the roads in the snow removal schedule that we're going to be paying for. So uh, that is my observation and that's my suggestion. That's Thank a valid you. concern, thanks. Uh, Sam, can you talk to the... Um... This has been brought up several times. Um, basically for the town to take over, the, the town won't do it because of liability. They're not going to do a private road because of the liability of the township. In order to make that a public road, it has to be, be brought up to the specs of the township. Then the town takes it over, then they plow it. Okay, in that case, is it possible? Sorry. Yeah. No, he knew he said it was yeah, private. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In that case, is it possible to contract the current snow removal service that we pay for privately and um, uh, deputize them? Um, so that is a contract with those specialists, because it's a specialist job. I mean, it's not, not a job for a big plow. It has to be a smaller plow. But there are people capable of doing that that would carry their own liability, as they do now, and they'd be contracted by the, by the, the township to do that work. Uh, so that ultimately um, everybody gets what they pay for. That's, that's the issue. Um, 2.2 million over 15 years may only work out to be a few dollars a year for all of us, but still there's a principle that we should get something for what we pay for. I think the issue, as Councilman Hertzberg stated, is not so much as having the proper equipment, but uh, taking on the liability and responsibility for paving a private road. And as was uh, discussed, that uh, you know, when private roads are brought up to um, our standards, then uh, they could be turned over to the township. The township accepts them. Uh, but until the, it, while it's a private road, um, I think conversely, we're asking the public to pay for the, the, the maintenance of a private road. And I think on top of that, there is a liability of the, of, of the township taking on responsibility for, for work that is, uh, is, is owned by another entity. Okay. And I don't know if you, Angela, if you have anything to add to that or no, Sam. You actually, as, as did Councilman Hertzberg, about private roads not being paid, paid for, maintained, or plowed for private associations. It's typically not how it, it operates, unfortunately. And I certainly understand your concern that you're contributing towards the, the public salt shed and, and you know, the benefit of, of not having your roads plowed for by the municipality. I certainly understand that as do a lot of other municipalities run into the same situation with their associations, unfortunately. You know, there's liability issues associated with that as well as you know, the protocols that if someone has a private road and they want it taken over, they have to bring it up to spec. And a lot of times the cost to do that are, are cost prohibitive. 
Yes, I, I understand that. And so um, what the mayor brought up that now the rest of the township is asked to pay for or, or, or to take on a certain the cost of the liability of plowing, say, quote-unquote, our roads. But that goes both ways, because now I'm paying for plowing their roads um, for, for free in my 80s on a fixed income at one point. I'm paying for somebody else's snow plowing. Uh, so in that fact, argument, that, is, that, that balances each other out. So I'm suggesting uh, the whole liability issue now becomes can we deputize private contractors but to plow the roads? It's not balanced out because they're not allowed on your road. No, what, what, what is balanced out is the cost factor that the mayor brought up. That I'm paying for somebody else's plowing as it is, and that is going to happen. Um, as a counter argument is that the township should not take on extra costs to plow my roads when the road is, is plow is, um, is private. That is really a mirror image of each other. So, so that is a separate issue. I would just uh, suggest deputize private contractors who are specialists in plowing those smaller roads. And the township as a whole now plows all the roads for everybody equally, and we all pay equally. I think that shifting the responsibility or the work of plowing the road is, is not the issue. It's the, it's the responsibility for the road and the acceptance of the liability of the road. Again, our, our DPW probably has the equipment, whether or not our own equipment is used or we, as you say, deputize a, a private company to do it. Uh, it you know, if, if Sparta Township pays that private company to do the work, Sparta assumes the liability and the responsibility for that. And I think that is the, is the issue that we're talking about. All right, so that would be very similar to the waste pickup, where the township contracts an outside contractor to do that for them. Do Why not do the same thing for the snow? Well, because we don't have waste management uh, trucks and, up and, and um, equipment right. in Sparta. So that's why I'm, I'm suggesting contract the snow removal services that do the work now that we pay out of our own pocket make that a township liability. Same as at one point we had our own private trash pickup and it was turned over to the township. So I think the issue can be managed, can be handled. It's, an, it's a matter of finding, especially, I'm bringing it up now because it has your attention because of the ordinance situation. It seems to me that um, strictly, um, a chess game of where do liabilities lie and, and what do you want to avoid, that is not, I don't think, the final answer. It is really... I think it is, actually. Uh, I mean, I think uh, part of it, too, is I think for every private association, they all have to take into consideration that when you decide to become private, there are upsides and there are downsides. And one of the downsides in, in that we hear is that they're now, they, the private, the HOA, is responsible for the maintenance of the roads. But it's, you know, but everyone who decided to become private kind of consented to that. And it's, it's something that the private association to take into serious consideration about whether they want to stay private if that cost of being private outweighs the benefit. And so one thing for all HOAs, when we, at least the way I look at it, I don't know what anyone else says, is at some point they decided to be private. And they decided, well, okay, then we're willing to accept that being private means our roads are not going to get plowed by the township. We're going to have to incur that. And so they consented to that, and they accepted that. Now it's come to a point that, hey, this is no longer economically feasible. That's a consideration for the private HOA um, to decide for itself what it wants to do. Um, that's just the way I see it. I think that, um, you know, I, I get it. I, I understand, like, you know, um, you're seeing all these roads plowed and then yours are, are not. But at some point, it has to be a, a decision by the HOA itself to take a hard look about what it wants to do um, and whether it is actually feasible to remain private. Okay, um, Mr. Mayor, to yeah. just, sure. just another thing Please. on the HOAs. If, in fact, it is a organized HOA, bona fide HOA, they would be entitled to reimbursement for snow re removal. 
However, they would have to enlist their own contractor and they would have to um, turn in the receipts to the um, to our road department um, and then they would look at the receipts and we would pay no more than what it would have cost us yeah. to plow those roads. What happens is these developers build these neighborhoods and then the town requires them to get their bond money back to bring all the roads up to standard so the town can take them. Developers that choose not to make them private and keep them private. If we start doing that now, then developers will be like, oh, we'll, just, we'll just not pay the bond, we'll keep it private, we won't keep it up to standard, and eventually the town will just cave and, and do it for us anyway. And that's what happens, and that's why we, we hold the standards and we make them keep the roads up to standard. And to your point, there needs to be an actual agreement in place in order for that to happen. So I think that's a, a separate conversation that's definitely worth having. Whoever is on the HOA now, whoever's on the leadership of the HOA up at Spar Lake, um, this may be something that you want to bring back to them to be able to say, hey, you know, maybe we should have a conversation with the township to look into, I think it's called the Kelly Act. Kelly Law. There's um, Kelly Law. We have that, correct? Yes. Kelly. Um, we have that agreement in place with Lake Mohawk, so they are reimbursed as well. Um, and the rules underneath that agreement, we have an agreement in place with them. They submit the receipts by a certain point of the year, and we reimburse based on what we would have paid for our own DBW guys to do it. So that, that might really be something worth taking back and, and having a separate conversation about. That seems to be an equitable solution, yes. And then we, we contact the manager's office when we have our information for you. Right. To, to see if we are... Uh, if you would say, if you become a bona fide HOA community, um, then, again, your costs would be reimbursed accordingly. Okay. All right. So that's the next step then. All right. Thank you. Just keep good books. Thank you. Just uh, having talked to DPW and the, the kind of bills that they get sometimes, yeah. um, you're, you're going to lose money if your books aren't in order and you submit a bill. Um, that they can't figure out or it's missing or something like that. So um, I would just, with that caveat, you know, I would, you know, if you can submit a bill, get it reimbursed at the cost it would have cost us, but just make sure that you're, before you do that, find out what is it that the DPW needs in order to reimburse you. What what ducks do you have to have in, in, the, in a row to make sure you get paid? Yeah, I'm sure yeah. the manager will be able yeah. to, uh, right. to totally. give us a standard. Exactly. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, my name is Adrian Meerman, A-D-R-I-A-N. Meerman is M-E-E-R-M-A-N, 12 Brook Drive. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Adrian. <coughs> Peter Litchfield, 120 Conestoga Trail. In reference to the uh, town not plowing a private road, I live on a private road, and I hired a guy, and he went to the tax assessor and was able to get my taxes reduced because of the additional expenditure that I had to take care of my road. So that's an avenue he could look at also. Thank you for mentioning that. Good evening, Kathy Ebenkausen, Scudders Road. Uh, my question this evening is regarding streaming. Previous sessions, uh, the public has asked for um, the ability to, for the township to pay for streaming for these meetings and any other meeting that is public in this uh, space. I was wondering if there is any update on any of the procurement of that equipment or any plan in place to do so. Basically, the IT department has been looking at and has gotten pricing on the equipment. Um, once he gets a total quote together, I will present it to the mayor and council. We'll see if they would like to move ahead with, with the amount. Okay, because that's been talked about for quite a while now, and I thought we were further along in this process. Is that not the case? It's all he would need to do is just get get the equipment in. Um, you know, if, if the mayor and council approves the amount. I heard you say it was not what I expected you to say, which was I thought previous discussions were around we 
had equipment that we had purchased previously, and we were waiting for it to come in. There was some equipment, but there would be also additional equipment that he would need to complete the task. So we got some of the equipment. Some of the, of it. some of the existing cameras that we have in here would work, but we would still need to get some of it, and I'm not exactly sure what he would need to tie in everything, but some of the existing cameras within the room we can use. So the township has an IT department, is that right? We have an IT person, yes. IT person. Department of One. Is it feasible to request that the IT department of One uh, provide some sort of proposal or request that a proposal be created so that if there is a, a, a definite like time frame or it can be provided to the public of any sort? So let me ask the question differently. Is there like a horizon or a target date for which you think um, this can come together? Or? I will talk with him tomorrow and get the pricing out to the mayor and council. And if uh, it looks good, um, just general consensus, I can go ahead and order the equipment. Can I add something to At the Environmental Commission last week? Um, uh, Debbie, our secretary, Debbie, Debbie Card, shared an update with us that might be more current, but correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, she was saying that the uh, they're waiting on two pieces of hardware, and um, it'll be for streaming, not not a full two-way experience, but it'd be for streaming, and that it was expected by mid to late April. Does that sound is that sound accurate yeah, or possible? I'm not with that at all. So um, I think the issue is that the equipment that came in was not compatible with the cameras that are already here, so some of the things need to be switched out. But in order to stream it one one way, in other words, to do exactly sort of the kind of meeting that the Board of Ed does to just stream the meeting. I think if I understand, and please double check this, I think the problem is the equipment that we got in just isn't compatible with the stuff that we already, that we had. So it needs to be, that court was using. Um, so I think that was what needed to be switched out. So do you maybe that's what she's talking about, the piece of hardware? It could just be the missing pieces that have to now go with what we got. I don't know, I don't know but I would love to know. So yeah. maybe we could find out at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Is it reasonable to request that? It sounds like you're all coming from some sort of a plan, right? That some kind of a plan to, yes, we're going to purchase certain equipment. We have a plan of uh, streaming, but not two-way. It sounds like what's being alluded to here is there's some discussion that's occurring that we're not privy to. Is there a way to bring that forward and help the public understand if there's a time frame, if there's a set amount of cost, a number of pieces of equipment, any of the plan that potentially could be out there that could be discussed to be made public? Well, I'm not aware of a, a plan. I don't, I mean, my view of it is let's get streaming pronto. And if you have to light a fire under Mr. Dempsey, light a fire under Mr. Dempsey to do it. Um, it's a little odd to me that we would order something that would then be incompatible. Um, I would think someone, you know, skilled in the art of IT would know, hey, if I purchase this, it, I know, one, I know my existing equipment, and two, I'm purchasing something that I know is going to be compatible. So the fact that we purchased something that is now incompatible um, is a little annoying. Um, so my view of it, the public's been waiting a long time for this. We've relied on the public to offer a service. Um, I appreciate the people who have done it. But enough is enough. Let's get the equipment and let's do it as fast okay. as we can. Let me be clear, I d and this is what I just said. I don't know if that's what happened. I don't know that it's incompatible. But my understanding is that there was some kind of issue I thought with this camera in particular. So and we probably don't I want to talk poorly know. about town employees not knowing the whole story either. Right, and that's what I'm saying. It's that that's my understanding, but that doesn't mean it's right. That's why I just asked ask the manager to get a report in here so that we know exactly what's going on and we know exactly when streaming can start. And I don't think any of us have a problem with streaming. I think it's, we're just, we've been asking to talk about this for a year. Well, not maybe a whole year, but we've been talking about it for a while. And, um, you know, so we, maybe if we could just get a report at the next meeting, maybe yeah. included in your manager's report. I know there were That'd issues with some of the equipment for back orders and mm -hmm. everything else because some of the stuff has been very difficult to get. Um, but I will have a full report for you in the next meeting. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
Any other comments from the public? Jenny Derricks, Tap into Sparta. This may not have an answer, but um, until something happens, you don't think it's going to happen here. Does the township, do the uh, emergency uh, officers have a plan if there is a derailment of some substances in our community? That's so it's um, probably maybe a day after uh, the derailment in East Palestine or Palestine, I guess probably Palestine, Ohio. Um, I raised this issue with um, Mayor Chiarello and Chief uh, McCarrick. Um, hey, do we have a plan in place? And, and um, we do. Um, th we're going to be briefed on what that plan is. I can't tell you what that is, but I, I mean, I share uh, your concern. I share the public's concern. Um, because, uh, as folks know, uh, we do have a rail line that goes through Sparta. Norfolk Southern, the, the uh, train company at issue in Ohio, also uses our train line. So, um, but my understanding is we have a plan in place that, you know, God forbid something like that happens, and we will be briefed on it um, soon, is my understanding. And others yeah. can correct me if I'm wrong. And go ahead. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, so, speaking with the council, we are going to present some information to the public on March 28th about the specifics. Um, myself and my office have already been in contact with the, um, the railway to see what kind of good up it can. How often it comes to town, how many miles of track it has in town, what other stops are. Um, I've also heard our Suffolk County Chiefs Association will set up a training for um, issues such as this. Any other questions? I okay, seeing none. Uh, will the deputy mayor please uh, introduce a motion to pay our bills? I make a motion to approve um, the bill list totals by fund dated February 28, 2023 in the amount of $8,414,784.59. Excellent. May I have a second, please? I'll make a second. Uh, thank you. The main motion is seconded. Are there any comments or questions about the expenditures? just had a question about some of the expenses, just, you know, for my own. Um, let me pull them up. Um, I saw some for uh, tuition reimbursement, and I just wondered what uh, what are we what is this tuition for? I know one of them is for our new um, I think uh, Tim, who's going to be uh, the town prosecutor that that makes sense to me. Um, I think there was another one. Uh, I think it's uh, here we are Joseph Antonello uh, it's uh, bill number it's check number one two six one oh seven. It was for tuition reimbursement. I was just wondering what, what that was for. Basically, it's within the police contracts that if they go for higher education, um, that we reimburse them for their tuition expenses. Okay. And then I also saw that, um, you know, we have a, a 126139. If, a, a amount of about seven million and some change for the school tax. Could you explain what you know that what is for, like how basically, that works? Basically, all the tax dollars that are collected within this building, um, which is the total tax that you pay for living in the township, um, they're collected by the town and then dispersed out to the county um, and the school board. So basically the way it works is roughly 18% of your total tax dollars come to the township. About 18 and a half, 19 cents goes to the county and approximately 63 to 64% of your tax dollars goes to the school board. So this actual Normal 
month is probably about five million, but we did have a debt service payment in the month of February for the school board. So we're actually responsible for paying their debt service as well. And how the school board school uses that money is up to them. We have no decision making process whatsoever. Yes, it's up to them on how to use the money that we alloc that's allocated to them. Yes. Is that right? Okay. We just have to pay it over once once we receive it, and usually um, I pay them out on a monthly basis. Thank you. That's all the questions I had about the expenses. Excellent. Thank you. Um, any other questions about the expenses? Hearing none, uh, may um, all those in favor of um, the expenses as read by Deputy Mary Clark say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Okay, the expenses are approved. Uh, we have one ordinance to introduce tonight. Uh, that is Ordinance 2304. Will the clerk please read the title of the ordinance? Excellent, thank you. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the ordinance as uh, presented? So moved. May I have a second? Second. Okay, is there a discussion? Uh, I, I do. I'd like to share just a comment or two about um, expectations for the next few weeks before we get to the actual hearing. Um, and, and I think, Sam, this probably goes to you mostly, um, and, and maybe working with the engineer and, and DPW director. So, yeah. <coughs> I just think for the next meeting for the hearing, I would like to see um, some answers to questions, some cost estimates for possible other size salt sheds, and a little bit more data in advance of that hearing so we can have a pretty vibrant discussion around that. Uh, you know, this is for, with interest, it's, this proposal is 2.4 million. And let me start also by saying that, you know, first and foremost, public safety is our top priority. It's, it's a top priority, no question. And secondly, I, I enjoyed spending time with, with Jim Zepp, and I do believe he and his team are really dedicated to their work and proud of our DPW facility as well should be, and very sincere in their intentions. So my, my questions and my need for more information has nothing to do with uh, trusting or liking Mr. Zepp or the DPW staff, that's, that's a given. But I also, we also have an obligation to understand the rationale and the assumptions and the business case for any of all investments that uh, we're going to use resident tax dollars for, especially something of this scale. And personally, I haven't seen, to make me comfortable, the level of analysis or details or the model that is behind this proposal. Um, you know, what are the assumptions? There's two topics at play here. One is the size and the cost of this salt shed for road salt. But closely interwoven to that, I think, is what is the forecast for our future salt need? Um, and the storage for that road salt. And I think these two need to be looked at in, together. So when you think about the future need for salt, you know, we can look at where we are today, what our average use is, and what our projected use is. But that projection needs to take into account some industry best practices and new truck equipment and other practices that are out there that could potentially reduce our salt usage or keep it flat. And I think we need to understand that a little bit better. I'm not sure we're gonna get all those answers. I know we're not. <laughs> three weeks from now by, by the next meeting. But I think we need to consider that, and that should be reflected in the forecast for what size salt shed or barn we need to build. You know, this, the road salt does not go away. Every piece of road salt goes down. It doesn't disappear, right? It goes into our waterways. It goes into our soil, potentially, our, our wells that you've been seeing some places uh, in our area, in our region. And I think by the use of some technologies and some best practices that are out there and some other places are using them, we have the potential to reduce that usage and not only protect our well water, but also our streams and uh, human health implications. There are actually readings in our area, meaning in Sparta and in Lafayette and some surrounding towns, and Newton's even higher, of levels of chloride that are now starting to approach, um, go above the lower limit for, at least for now, for aquatic insects. Next, if it goes higher, would be fish. Next above that would be human <coughs> consumption. So I think we just need to keep that in mind as we think about the future demand and need. And as we have this hearing in a few weeks, 
consider what the assumptions in the model are for the size and the scope of this investment. You know, for instance, do we need 10,000 tons? You know, we use 1,500. To, uh, we have a 1,500 ton shed right now. You know, our annual usage is about 4,500. So do we need, what's the cost of a, a six or a 5,000 ton shed? And would that be sufficient? My understanding, like a lot of the departments do, they think about trying to create revenue to pay for them, you know, their expenses themselves, and that was the idea behind that size, mm -hmm. was to sell to other towns knowing that they're always searching for places to buy salt. So hopefully to create revenue to actually pay for that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think, I mean, that's, that's an idea, that's a business model, if, but we, I think we should purposely want to get into that and all agree on that, that that's something else we want to do. And I personally would like to see commitments from local towns that they have a need and they would use us for that and they would actually, not that they have to sign now, but they would actually show a, a concrete, discrete interest and an expectation that we can go to them and not just build it and have no one come. Um, you know, no one's going to come from an hour away to get salt from us, right? There has to be probably within our region, you know. Uh, so if we're going to get into that business model, we should do that on purpose, talk about that, make sure it's something that the town wants to get into and administer that and have clients that we know can use for that. I think the other thing is that Jim Zeff knows the landscape here. So we have had relatively, I don't even want to say these <coughs> words out loud, but I'm going to say them, mild winters. Um, we have had, the past couple of years have been mild, so I don't, I mean, I think doing a number comparison of that versus the kind of snow that we've gotten since I've lived here for 30 plus years. Um, I think that Jim Zeff is in the best position to do that. I think he gave us some of the numbers, but I think he's in a, a best, better position also because we have had years where we could not find salt. We couldn't get it. And even if we got it, we couldn't store it anywhere. We didn't have anywhere to go. So then we, we started looking at other service providers mm -hmm. for our salt. So I always think it's best that we put ourselves where we are as self-sufficient as possible and as independent. I don't have a problem if Jim Zepp says he, that there's that they can do that. Um, I just don't want to give away valuable space because I don't think that we can bank on the fact that taking our landscape, taking our elevation, taking our proximity to uh, Pennsylvania and New York and that weather system that comes through um, you know, I just would like to hear if more facts from Jim. He knows. He's been here for decades. And, you know, I just don't want to make any knee-jerk reaction based on the data we get from a couple of mild winters versus some of the winters that those of us that have lived here for a long time have seen. I it think would be brutal. I think when he said 42 or 4,500 tons average per year, I think that was going back more than the last, the last few. I just want to make yeah, sure. Yeah, That's yeah. I think our max is 7,500. Yeah, that one year, 2015, yeah. 7,500. Um, and if there's cost-effective, more environmentally friendly solutions, I'd love to hear them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Jim, and Jim, <clears throat> my trust in Jim would say he'd find them. We we can help him. Yeah, the, because yeah, we, I think he's very in tune to that. Yeah. He does his homework. The he's um, a smart guy. there is there is a lot of lot of out there now that uh, we don't have yet that we might employ, and maybe we just do it on a few trucks as a pilot basis, you know, and test out see if it helps. Um, not only cameras, but sensors and other types of pre-wetting and there's lots of other things that can be done. Um, those, are, those are out there. And well, I think you're referring to the letter from the Environmental Commission, and that I see is copied to Jim. Yep, so it is. So Jim will have this information, and then he'll be able to answer it. Yeah, yeah, it is copied. A lot, a lot of that is in there. Um, but that also affects our decision in a few weeks. Um, it, you know, we build a 10,000-ton salt shed. And then over the next three, five, 10, 12, 15 years, we're using only a small portion of it uh, because of these. We, I thought we were just replacing up there what we had. No, the one up there is 1,500. The one that they want to build is 10,000 tons. I agree, the small, the small old one definitely needs to be replaced. It's aged right. and it's decrepit. That's going. Uh, they're going right. to take that down, yeah, and then yeah. they're going to, in its place, put up the new bigger one. Yeah, correct? yes. So that's seven. Both. No, 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 it's, but it's seven times the size, perhaps seven times the size, okay. yeah. So I just think we need to think about if we're investing $2.4 million, that we consider the idea of a more modest size salt shed and maybe put some of that money into this new, some new technologies, best practices, and again, maybe baby step, you know, do it slowly but surely and, and test out to see if the impact of these pilots works. But and then we could be the role model for the area, you know. But I also think that that, that was not just for a salt shed, wasn't it also for a lean-to? 
on the side of that shed for other for alternative storage as well for yeah, equipment? I think so. so. I haven't seen the design, but I've heard from Jim, and yeah. design is going to have a little overhang area to put some extra I'm equipment. I'm saying I don't want the public to get the wrong idea that it's a $2.4 million salt holder. It's also to build storage for trucks and equipment and things like that as well. So we haven't seen the whole design no. um, because we haven't approved this yet probably. So I'd be curious, you know, to just confirm that. But my understanding is that it's for more than just the salt shed. Yeah, I believe it's the side overhangs that mm -hmm. have shelter area. It's not that it's purpose for that, though. Right. That's my understanding. Uh, I think that Jim now has the Environmental Commission report. And, and one thing I hope he'll build into it as well, I see that you want us to do all these different practices, but those are not without a cost. Right, an upfront cost to switch from one practice to another it's going to cost something, and so that's fine, but I think that, you know, the issue will be, one, what's the cost? Two will be whether that will lead to a diminution in our usage of salt, right? So mm -hmm. what's the point of getting a new practice if it's not going to change the amount of salt that we have to use, right? And so um, I think that will be something helpful because it's a, if we do these best practices, that will reduce our salt intake by 25 percent, then therefore we can possibly have a, a reduction in the size of the salt shed by 25 percent. I'm just, you know, this is just pure speculation, but that would be helpful in my decision-making process. But for tonight, you know, this isn't meaning we're spending $2 million on a salt shed. This is just to raise the money. Once the money comes in, we can decide how much to use for a salt shed. This is just the top-end number. And my understanding what's driving a lot of this number is the labor cost, right? A lot of this is we know we have to pay <coughs> prevailing wage. Is that right? Yes. And so, and there's no way around that. I think it's 16,000 is the cap. Anything over 16,000, you have to pay prevailing wage. Yeah, I, I mean, some of the work in, and um, you know, our department heads are very resourceful as far as using some in-house labor and letting some of our guys that have specialties do what they can do, like if, they're, if they also have an electric license, they do the electric. And so, I, I mean, usually they try to save as much as they can by doing in-house labor where, you know, all possible. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you knowing Jim's up um, and the, that, the talent in that DPW group, that he will do every single thing possible to maximize every single dime that's given and to come and do his very best to come in under budget and above expectations. I, I would, it would be interesting to see other costs of similar sized salt sheds in recent years in our, in our region, not, not looking at something from wherever, Montana, but looking at something in the Northeast, if there's any recent examples of salt sheds and costs, and at the same time look at a cost of a salt shed that's maybe, you know, Quadruple the one we have now, six six thousand tons maybe, or five thousand or seven, and kind of seeing where that, how much savings is there, you know, and just trying to get some analysis around that. That's all I have. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else for any comments? Okay, I'd have, I'd like to offer two comments. Uh, one is that, um, uh, as we mentioned a couple times already, that uh, I I would like to see, and I think we were uh, expected to see different size options quoted. Uh, was is that still? Expected. It's still possible. I mean, I basically the the pricing. Um, obviously, if we decide to go with a smaller size, um, any amounts of ordinance can be canceled and, and taken off off the rolls of debt and stuff like that. If we approve this, it's up to the amount we approve. It doesn't have to That's be correct. the amount we approve. Correct. It could be up to, and then we have. Mm -hmm. Full of play in there. My assumption is once the, the crews are there and the equipment's there, you don't see much of a savings by, by shrinking right. it because right. the labor is not going to change. The economy the of scale, you're right, is um, building an 8,000 ton shed is probably not much more uh, less expensive than a 10,000 ton shed. Right. The big, the biggest but we'd like to see those numbers if, if we could put some modeling. Uh, and secondly, um, even if uh, there are best practices that we can implement uh, or other practices and other equipment that we can purchase, um, having uh, a, a storage facility at that size doesn't lock us into a practice that we have right now. We can always improve our practices going forward, use less salt if we can, and uh, we'll still have a, a building that uh, is not uh, is, uh, is 
can be repurposed if we need to, or it can be downsized, or, or not downsized, but compartmentalized if we have other uses for it. So it'll be an asset for the town now and in the future. It doesn't preclude, preclude us from doing a road salt management plan, you know, something that oh. the council decides on. Um, if it will take some funding, though, it'd be nice to have it come out of this and not having to raise more money for that. The, While we're on the, the other thing that, again, that, that it veils to us, now, for example, okay, yesterday, today was really the first major event of the season, maybe the last, but the salt prices were we're up a little bit this year, but guaranteed that there wasn't a big usage of salt, so it's going to be plentiful come the fall, and the prices may mm -hmm. go down because, you know, they want to get rid of what they've got. So, or God forbid we can't get it, it goes through the roof. Right. So with a larger building, when you got an opportunity to buy low and save it, when it may go high, you know, it, it just, you have that extra ability. <laughs> and it doesn't go bad. Right, right. Within reason. I mean, you know, we're not going to go out and buy probably 10,000 tons of salt at once and have it last for three or four years, but there's probably some happy medium in there where you're... Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, may, uh, so now the uh, ordinance has introduced, uh, and there have been no, more, no um, changes uh, asked for, so uh, may I have a roll call vote, please, on the... On the Introduction of Ordinance 2304. Yes. 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 Uh, the ordinance has been introduced. Next, we'll have a hearing of Ordinance 2303. Will the clerk please read the title of Ordinance 2303? Uh, at this time, I'd like to open up to the public for any comments from the public on Ordinance 2303. Good evening, Pete Litchfield, 120 Conestoga Trail. <clears throat> In reading your ordinance, I don't see anything about where these commemorative flags are going to be placed on flagpoles. I think the ordinance did say that uh, um, did have some uh, placement uh, and uh, options, uh, not options. The only um, thing I saw was under the American flag. Well, actually, I don't think it can be on the same pole as the American flag as one. Uh, it needs to be on a, se it a separate flagpole. Flag pole. Yeah. So, but other than that, um, I don't. Separate, separate flagpole and below the height of the American flag. Correct. Right. So if we have flagpoles in town that have only one pole, then that would not be a place for it. There would not be places where we have two or more poles in town. I don't know how many there are uh, in town besides the up front here. Yeah, yep, but other, uh, any other places in town where we have two flagpoles flying? The, does the Dykstra Park in the back? Dykstra, White Lake. Does White Lake have two flags? Yeah, I don't know. And some of your garbage here. Yeah, I'd like to really know where the, you know, like, if it's going to take the place of the POW flag, is that your intentions? No, it would have to be on the same pole. And, that, uh, right. those and here you say the uh, township, the following flags are hereby permitted. You're saying you're, you, you're taking the responsibility of permitting the POW flag to fly. President Trump signed the POW MIA Flag Act, new law, PL 116-67. This law will serve as a daily reminder of service members still missing. Our national leaders made a pledge to account for every service person who did not come home and has not been accounted for yet. Uh, being a former military person, I see everybody as green. Uh, these commemorative flags, I looked on the website, there is like 11 organizations that have commemorative flags that have month, a month-long celebration. And what's going to happen is one of these days, someone's going to come and want their flag up. You're going to say no. Like, we just had the day of hate. It could be the hate people come. Put our hate flag up. And you say no. They get one of their hate lawyers to, to waste our money. 
Um, I think you, you guys are stepping on some, some dangerous and expensive uh, expenditures to our town. We're already in a, in a, in a, a large expenditure of legal fees with a, or the warehouse. And then we're going to step into doing flags. This is, uh, you know, who's going to be the flag czar? Who's going to be the guy that we come after and sue if, uh, if, if my flag gets moved? Thank you very much. Any other comments from the public? Okay. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the dais. Uh, is there any... Um, is there, uh, did we, we, we seconded the motion, didn't we? We did. Um, is there any, uh, actually, no, we didn't read this into the record, did we? Um, all right, so we have to, before there's a, there's a comment on it, we need to um, have it uh, uh, approved or a uh, motion made and seconded before uh, we, we uh, have comment on it. So uh, it was my mistake. Um, uh, I, I'll let Angelo direct me, but I, I, I would like to make a motion to amend. Okay, well, I think the ordinance, and before you do that, I'm sorry, uh, I think the, or the ordinance has to be introduced, uh, the motion made, the motion approved, and then there can be discussion among which there can be uh, uh, changes in, uh, made. I Is that a fair reading? Yeah, the, the reading of the title of the ordinance, then you opened it to the public, and now the motions, did you, did you, I thought someone did yeah. the motion to... Yeah, I think that was my mistake. I don't think I read that the motion was, uh, that we made the motion. To, I think I just opened it to the public, which was my mistake. So I think the, the cadence goes, the motion is uh, made, the motion is seconded, and then there can be discussion on it. But you can't discuss a motion that hasn't been put to the floor. Okay, so that was my mistake. I apologize. Um, so, uh, again, just to restate, uh, I would, uh, we'll, I'll ask for a motion to, uh, to uh, approve the ordinance. It'll be seconded, and if there are any discussion happens after the motion is seconded, and then at that time changes can be introduced. Uh, so that being said, uh, do I have a motion to approve Ordinance 2303 as, as read by the clerk? I'll make a motion to approve 2303. Thank you. amending the code of the Township of Sparta respecting display of flags on Township flagpoles. Excellent. May I have a second? I'll second it. Okay. Now there can be discussion. So that you, and typically the person who made the motion uh, gets to be the first person to offer a discussion point. Sure. As currently drafted, I cannot, uh, I will not vote to approve um, this ordinance. Uh, I, I sent some changes that I had um, in doing so. Um, this was based on uh, research that I had done uh, into other flag ordinances, including um, one that was cited approvingly by our Supreme Court. Um, and if you would like, I can tell you, if necessary, what those changes are, um, if that's necessary for purposes of the record. I can do that. I think that it's appropriate so that the full council understands what changes you're seeking to make. Sure. As well as the public. Okay. The, the first change that I've offered uh, is under Section 1, uh, subparagraph A, under display of flags. Um, uh, the last sentence, uh, the phrase, starting with the phrase of, uh, that will be strict. So the phrase of same shall not show religious preference. That will be stricken, and it will say conforms to the provisions of sections 2 and 3 below. Then I am adding a section. I recommend the addition of a section 2, uh, and this will then cause all the other sections to then, you know, get renumerated. Um, Section 2 uh, will say the fo following flags are considered commemorative flags for purposes of this ordinance and may be displayed pursuant to the policies and procedures identified herein as an expression of Sparta Township's official sentiments. Those flags are flags of governments recognized by the United States. Flags of the government recognized by the United States will be one of the flags that's considered commemorative. Flags of sister cities. The flags of official sister cities of Sparta may be displayed in conjunction with an event involving the sister city. Three, flags displayed in conjunction with official ceremonial items. Other flags may be displayed in conjunction with official actions, ceremonial items, or proclamations of Sparta Town Council. Four, 
flags of sports teams. The flag of a Sparta Township sports team may be displayed in commemoration of a significant achievement. Five, flags consistent with Sparta Township's mission and priorities. Flags may be displayed that identify with a specific historical event, cause, nation, or group of people that Town Council chooses to honor or commemorate consistent with Sparta Township's missions and priorities. And I've added a section three. The following are not allowed as commemorative flags and will not be considered by Town Council. One, flags of a particular religious movement or creed to avoid the appearance of Sparta Township government endorsing a religion or particular religious movement or creed. Two, flags of a political party to avoid the appearance of city government endorsing a political party. And three, flags advocating a certain outcome in an election. And the final change that I had um, was uh, back in section one uh, under display of flags to add a subparagraph E uh, that simply states, commemorative flag shall be displayed for a period of time that is reasonable and customary for the subject uh, that is to be commemorated. Um, the purpose of these additions were simply to be more specific uh, about what uh, the township will consider commemorative flags. It also um, gives us uh, very clear that we have what's called effective control over what will be displayed. That's a key element um, that the courts look to to determine whether this is government speech, which we are entitled to make. Um, and so by adding these, I think that that puts us on much solid, more solid uh, legal footing uh, within the case law that allows for, uh, you know, townships and, and, and cities to decide what type of flags they want to fly. So that was the, was the purpose of those amendments. Excellent. Any other comment? So, so um, Neil, are you finished? Or? Councilman. I'm yes, Councilman, I'm uh, Deputy Mayor Clark. I'm sorry, uh, Councilman Bovey. So did you mention in the beginning about what it includes uh, flags of other governments. Can you explain more what you mean by that? Um, that I was heard you correctly. The flag, that, sort of addressing uh, Mr. Litchfield's point, which is this uh, flag owners can do absolutely nothing to change the law that exists right now, which is that you have to have the American flag, you have to have the POW flag, and you have to have the New Jersey flag. And there's nothing in this ordinance that changes that. We have to respect that, and any commemorative flag we have would have to respect that. So pointed out, we couldn't say, hey, let's put, you know, let's move the POW flag and throw in, you know, Sparta volleyball. Can't do that. They get their own, you know, the POW flag stays where it is and is not affected in the least um, by a commemorative flag. If I can build on that also, um, there was an attached policy that goes with the ordinance. I didn't see that in amongst the agenda, but in the policy under Section 2, uh, uh, number or letter F, uh, all commemorative and organizational flags must be, must be smaller in size than the American flag and the Jersey State flag that is displayed uh, at the municipal building and shall be displayed on a separate flagpole from that on which the American flag is displayed with the New Jersey State flag. So that reiterates the point that um, this would not supersede uh, the U.S. flag or the POW MIA flag and will be on a separate flagpole from that. So, sorry, continue. Yeah, so the, the flag policy. Uh, I've been confused by this last time and confused by it now, and I think the public is confused a little bit. Section F, uh, Section 2, letter F, it talks about the where this commemorative flag will be placed versus the U.S. and the POW flag and the New Jersey flag. I think it's just a sequence of how the sentence is structured. Right now it says, and shall be displayed on a separate flagpole from that of, on which the American flag is displayed with the New Jersey state flag. I think we should just... It's minor, but just reword this to say that and shall be displayed with the New Jersey state flag, comma, on a separate flagpole from that in which the American flag is displayed. Just so there's no confusion. It's just swapping out the yeah. parts of the sentence just to clarify it because, you know, we all have the same intention that it's not going to be on the American flag pole or near the POW flag at all. And it's actually that, that section F does specifically state that the flags would be flown at the municipal building. Yeah, no other, it's, it's no missing other a comma too. So if we can just, I think we should clean up, clean that up so there's no confusion. <clears throat> so that would be um, a, uh, a motion to change the ordinance as uh, no. So 
We have to, we haven't yet approved the ordinance uh, changes that um, Deputy Mayor Clark had suggested. Uh, so what you're suggesting, Councilman Lometti, is that another ordinance change to clarify the language on the policy, Section 2F? Yes. Okay, so we'll come back to those two changes unless we want to introduce them now. Or, or actually, um, or if anybody else has any other comments before we move on. I have comments. Okay, go ahead. So, I want to, I want to understand. So, first of all, I was not privy to any of those proposed changes. I don't know how that happened. In an email, I don't know who you recommended them to, but I got this. I did not get any kind of proposed recommendations to it or updates to it at all. So that's, this is the first time I'm hearing about this. Um, not that that's new, but if we're going to bring it to a vote, we should have the most current copy, inclusive at least, or aware of everyone's comments on it. The other thing well, we, is when I heard you going through, we couldn't do that. and when I look at this, I hear a lot of adjectives. I hear a lot of subjectiveness. I hear a lot of ambiguity around this. The word commemorative to me is not sitting right. I think there's three flags out there on the flagpoles now that unify us together, right? We spent a huge investment on putting in lights in front of the building, on, uh, and we also have a ribbon campaign that goes along with the lights. We have now spent money from our legal counsel. We have spent an inordinate amount of time and I would just like somebody on this council to explain to me why it makes more sense to micromanage what is going on these flagpoles rather than us just adopting an ordinance that says these are the flags that are going to be on the municipal poles, everything else will be celebrated on the lights. And then it's over, there's no subjectivity to the commander's point, we won't get sued. No one will be able to say anything. I mean, and, and understand, this is only for municipal flags. Anybody, we're not saying this has to do with flags all over, everywhere, in Sparta. We, we, it's municipal flags. So I would like you guys to explain to me why all of this micromanagement of flags is better for our community than saying we're going to allow government speech to take over our flagpoles. Who's the you guys? Is it with me or? I can I'm answer asking, that if you like. I'm asking, I'm asking the council members. I'm asking people that are supporting all the effort we're putting on micromanaging flagpoles in municipal areas, how that is better for the community than just saying we reserve the right to say this is what goes on these polls. We're following state and national guidelines. That's it. And we're going to use the lights and the ribbon campaign that we have that we've already made the investment in to handle everything else? Well, personally, I can answer the lights question. We only see lights at night, and you see, you see flags uh, all throughout the day. So I think the, I think, well, we can see ribbons, and we could also see a flag. So I think it's important to also um, add to that um, a flag. Flags are, as, as we know, are very powerful symbols. And uh, we've had a number of um, uh, situations lately in town uh, of people destroying flags, and people feel very strongly when that happens. and. Uh, and I think the, the, the community or the township should stand up and, um, and show that, um, that certain flags are respected. Right, but that's, you're referring to one flag. That's what, what this is, is all gonna about, come on. But I, what I'm saying is, what are you going to do when somebody comes and wants to put up a, hor a flag that hurts people? Okay. So, so an anti-Semitic flag, you're going to say, oh, well, we're not going to do that. We're going to get sued. Yes, we are going to well, say I, that I we, can, we point, will not do that. Why not remove all the subjectivity and keep the flags in place that unify, that we have right now, follow existing protocol. This is why I'm asking. I need to understand why this is a better solution than opening everything up to all the subjectivity, micromanagement, which with every single adjective, with every single subjective word, is nothing more than open, uh, an open opportunity to be sued. And, and to also put the opportunity out there that another hate group or some other group is going to post something that is going to hurt members of our community. Everybody needs to be represented equally, and so I would like an explanation from, you know, I understand that the three of you are behind this. I just need to understand 
you know, you just gave me your explanation, but you're referring to one flag. I am. Uh, and also to, your, uh, to address another point, the, um, the, the, a group cannot say that you can fly a flag. A group can make a petition to fly a flag, but ultimately the, the decision to fly a flag rests with the council. The council by majority vote will determine whether or not a flag is flown and for the particular length of time. That's subjective. It's the council exercising its uh, right to free government speech. It's subjective. Sure. Every vote we take is subjective. Well, I think all we're doing is changing or adding an additional mode of expression, right? We ought, you know, as you pointed out, we show lights, lights we show ribbons, um, and so we're adding an additional one. And there's probably a subjectivity that goes into what lights we're going to display already. That subjectivity already exists, right? And it already exists with respect to the ribbons. So we're not adding some additional level of subjectivity. We're simply saying we're adding another forum of expression for government speech. And so the last time I was here, um, and I suggested that folks kind of delve into what this is, and I did. And, and frankly, um, to be honest with you, um, which is Councilwoman Quinn's concerns were my concerns when this first came to my attention. I was like, wait a minute. Should we be doing this because the person who says, hey, I think you should fly you know, this flag, and we say no, have we abridged that person's free speech rights? And the answer definitively is no, you haven't. Because you know the government gets to decide what it wants to speak for itself, and that's why the ordinance reads as it does now, this is not a forum for free expression. And that's explicitly what the court said in, in the Boston case, which is they didn't have that. And the reason why they cited approvingly to the San Jose uh, flag ordinance, which is, the mo which is one of the models upon which this ordinance is based, explicitly says that. It tells the public, this isn't for you to get your pet cause. We get to decide. And the You're deciding to have the government pet cause. And, it, and you know what? That's completely fine. Government does that all the time. Government, by, by very nature of passing policies, tells the public and expresses what they believe. In fact, if you remember the, the old advertisement, beef is what's for dinner, that was a government campaign. That was government speech. I think it's gross overreach, and I don't think the government should be telling people what to think, ever, personally. They're so, not telling people what this, to well, speak. That's what I think government that, speech is. Government speech is politicizing our flagpoles and putting ourselves and being willing to take on unnecessary litigation so that the government can say what it wants to on our flagpoles. That's exactly, well, unless someone can change my mind, that is exactly what Well, I is. think it would be great. Our volleyball team just won the state championship. Wouldn't it be fantastic to fly the flag of the Sparta volleyball team outside the municipal building? That's what we can do. We can do that with this. Right now, we can't do that. The, the sports teams I don't think the high school any other that. country's flag or any other group's flag belongs on those flagpoles. End of story. All right, is there any other comment? I'm sorry, and this may seem out of turn, but there was a significant alteration to the amendment. Yep, wait, just about So will there be other opportunity for comment by the public since it's a significant change? Uh, so, so the the uh, the changes that were that were suggested by uh, Deputy Mayor Clark and uh, and. Um, I right. haven't been voted on yet, and that's why they didn't appear in the in the material that was uh, provided here. So, right. So, will it will? But this is the second reading. This is the hearing. This right. is the opportunity. So, what so will happen is that the uh, and I had a, um, a discussion with the attorneys this morning. Uh, if the amendments, if we pass them, we haven't made a motion to pass them yet. If they are passed, if they are substantive, and if substantive is a mushy word. Uh, if they are substantive, that would require us to recast the uh, the ordinance, and that would bring it to the next meeting, having those changes. If we were to adopt them here, if those, and if any changes that we adopt here are not substantive or minor, and minor again is a mushy term, um, then we could vote to approve the ordinance as it is with minor changes. And so uh, we'll soon we'll see if 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 we are introducing changes that were that were offered. Um, 
if that were the case. But are we deciding that this is substantive or minor? Oh, we haven't made, we haven't um, made, we haven't approved those yet, so I'll, I'll ask the, the, uh, the you attorney afterwards. You have to decide afterwards. that bef after you vote on them? Well, we haven't approved those changes yet, so the changes might not be approved, and so there's nothing to discuss. So after those changes are approved, if they are approved, then we'll, we'll go to take the next step. So are there any other, uh, any uh, aforementioned motion to make any changes to the ordinance? Okay. The changes that were talked about are not going to be part of this ordinance unless there are, they are. Well, okay, I make a motion that the ordinance 2303 be amended as specified in my statement about the changes that I made. So the motion is to add the suggested amendments that I suggested to the ordinance. Okay. And so the cadence will be the motion to, to amend is made. The motion has to be seconded. There will be a discussion on those amendments only. And then there will be a vote to amend the ordinance as presented with those changes. Okay. So is there a second for that motion? Can I complicate things and amend? No, let's do, one, let's do one at a time. One I at a think. time? Yes, okay. please. So we're voting to approve the, or to second the motion to amend the changes based on the, uh, the changes proposed by Deputy Mayor Clark. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. Um, is there a discussion on those changes introduced by Deputy Mayor Clark? And, if you want to um, summarize those changes again for the discussion purposes. Again, for per they, they were to add, um, so it's clear what is considered a commemorative flag um, to give notice uh, to the public about what it is. It also specifies and uh, further bolsters that we have um, effective control over uh, the flag. And it's not a free-for-all, which is what got the city of Boston in a lot of trouble and why they their flag ordinance got um, tossed is because uh, they had no control. Um, and, and this is, you know, as the court said there, the most salient feature of the city of Boston case is that the city had no control over the message. Town council control over the content and, and meaning of message is what is controlling. What those provisions do is give us control over the content and meaning of the message. And that will uh, insulate us from, if, if there is any, challenge, which I, I'm not aware of other, you know, towns that have, uh, I think Asbury Park, there's some other ones. Um, this, the, whoever would try to bring this is going to lose um, because we have, you know, this, given all the control that we have, we've made it clear that this is not a forum for free expression and we have com complete control over the message that can be conveyed and here's are the type of commemorative flags that we would consider. Okay. Is there any discussion on those changes that were summarized by Deputy Mayor Clark? I just want to be clear and clarify something that Deputy Mayor said before. So you said before we have lights, but you can't see lights at dark and this, that, and the other thing. And I think that in the respect of an organization or anyone that challenged and came in and said, well, we want this put up and you didn't do it, to your point, you could put it up and not um, – you know, market it and not whatever. You're not going to be able to do that on a flagpole. So if, if another organization challenges, and I know in municipal court, and I'm sure Angelo, if I'm wrong, tell me, you can sue for the municipality for anything. You're talking about in superior court. For in superior court. court, right. So, uh, you know, again, I just want to reiterate my concerns. I, you know, I, it's hard for me to follow. I was trying to take notes as far as the things you were saying you wanted to change. But when I asked the, the board a question about why this is better, I don't think, in my opinion, I don't think that this is better for our community. So I think this is just gross, reckless government overreach. Okay. Any other comments about uh, the amendment proposed by Deputy Mayor Clark? I, I also, if, you know, I, Again, I know I'm not going to win this fight, but I will tell you this. I think to the commander's point, there needs to be something put into this ordinance that refers to not the American flag, the state of New Jersey, or the POW flag as a commemorative flag. I don't agree with that. I think those are our staple. Commemorative and, and using that word in connection with commemorative organizations and everything else leaves the opinion 
that those flags are it's just as important as others, and I don't think that's the case. And I think something needs to be put in to protect it, more so than just this word commemorative, like all these other fluffy words. It's They're not. Protected federally. Yeah, I don't see any, yeah, any language in here that says that, that the uh, flag of the United States, of New Jersey, or the POW flag is commemorative. I don't see that language in here. Yeah, I didn't see it either. I think it's the, the difference between the two is that those other ones are commemorative and organizational, but not the three U.S., New Jersey, and POW. Okay. Any other discussion on the amendments proposed by Deputy Mayor Clark? Okay, may I have a roll call vote, please, to approve the amendments uh, as summarized by Deputy Mayor Clark? Councilman Bullitt. Yes. Councilman McQuinn. Absolutely not. Deputy Mayor Clark. Yes. Councilman Hertford. No. Mayor Chiarello. Yes. The amendment has passed. Uh, now, are there any other amendments proposed? Yes. I'd like to make a motion that we amend. The flag flying policy, section two, part F, the end of this sentence to clarify, make it crystal clear that any commemorative organizational flag will be on a separate flagpole from the American flag and the POW flag. It will be on the other pole. A second pole has to be there. Right. So it'll specifically state that the um, and I think this goes further that says that the only display of commemorative flags would be in, in, the, in the municipal building and on a separate flagpole from that of the American flag uh, and the POW flag. Um, uh, may I have a second of the uh, amendment proposed by Councilman Blay? I second the motion. Any discussion of the amendment from Councilman Blumeni? Sure. John Shaw, 14 Warren Court, Sparta. You guys have put a lot of words out there, and like you just said, Section 2, something, F, there's no anything under Section 2. Yeah, the policy wasn't we have distributed no, that. So we have no idea. So, like, it would really help if we could actually read what you guys are putting well, there. I, listen, I agree. I think that my view of it, and, and Angelo can correct me if I'm wrong, I would uh, I would think it would be a better opportunity if once we get this amended that everyone can see it um, and have another hearing about that. Um, that's my preference. I'll leave it so to the, our capable was, lawyer to tell us if that's right. The changes that were discussed this evening are substantive, so it would be as if this amended ordinance is the ordinance introduction. That would have been my would point. Have it's, they're substantive. Made yeah. would have a hearing at the next or All right. Thank you. The other thing is, is you know, as the gentleman Chuck, uh, proposed, was that uh, we do have a separate policy document separate from the ordinance document. I don't know why it was written that way. Um, it's, I, I think those two could be merged. Um, a, a lot of the language is the same, and, and they, they do overlap in some cases, but they don't. And um, uh, the, the policy was distributed in when the ordinance was introduced at the last meeting, but the policy document was not part of the package today, nor was it part of the public package. So, um, so I, move, I move that we table this whole thing until we can pull it together, have a time to collaborate. So, so I'm sorry, we have a motion to first hear Councilman Blumetti's amendment, and then we can have a motion to table after that if uh, once that is adjudicated. Um, and so I'll allow another and comment. Uh, on, this is on Councilman Blumetti's recommendation, or? It's in general, I guess, <clears throat> excuse me, but to follow up on what Councilman Blumetti is saying, uh, to Christine's point, uh, there are several flagpoles in the community. Who's going to decide which flags these commemorative flags are flown on? On which, which poles? On which poles will they be flown? Yep. Um, that's not a limit. Uh, that's not elucidated in elucidated in this ordinance either. And maybe that could be a problem or a sore spot. Mm -hmm. How do you decide who gets to go on the plaza and who goes in a in a park? In the, in the policy, uh, 2F says that it'll be displayed at the municipal building, so that's the and – and again, I understand that you don't have that document. It wasn't part of the pack, public package, uh, but we'll rectify that when we introduce it. Um, because currently right. there's – and I mentioned this to you before – currently there's a two-flagpole monument down, with a at monument Dykstra at Dykstra Park that is currently flying the American flag and the Italian flag which is done by Unico every year. They fly it, they raise it, they have a ceremony, 
And so how does that happen and this not happen? And how do we decide whether it goes at Station Park? You're saying they're all going to go on the plaza. So then what's the point of talking about that we have pla flagpoles in other parts of town? Well, Unico, I think I, I was there when Unico built that. Right, but it's township property. Well, so this is, this is. Nothing against again, Unico. I'm just no. making a point. But again, and I think that's only one. Yeah. So again, this will be for the displayed at the municipal building, it says in the policy. And again, we'll, we'll clarify, we'll get those documents out to the public at the next That's meeting. That's not clear either. Okay. The um, municipal flagpoles versus the flagpole at the municipal building are two different things. Right, it says the municipal building flagpole in, in 2F. Um, so we have a, um, a motion, uh, uh, Councilman Lometti made a motion to amend. Um, is there a second? I second the motion. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? Actually, that was already just seconded, and we were, started, we were in the middle of the discussion. Is there any other discussion on the amendment proposed by Council Member May? Okay. Hearing none, can I have a roll call vote, please, on the amendment? And, and uh, Council Member May, can you just summarize again your amendment that we're voting on? Yes, the amendment is to make it crystal clear that this a commemorative or organizational flag is flown on a separate flagpole from the U.S. and POW flagpole. In other words, with the New Jersey flag, it has to be a second flagpole. Excellent. May I roll call vote, please? Councilman Brunetti. Please. Yes. Councilman Quinn. Wait a second. I have a question. A second flagpole. So we have the American flag. We have the state of New Jersey flag. American and, flag and POW flag, and then right. we have the New Jersey flag. And then the New Jersey flag. So there's two flagpoles. Correct. Okay. Here, there's two flagpoles. Right. So where are you putting another flag? Under, Under the, the New Jersey flag. flag. So it would share the poll that the New Jersey state flag is on? The way that it's written, yes. Can you tell me again, just summarize one more time, Councilman Blumetti, what you're recommending? I'm recommending that this path, this piece of language is clarified to make it sh make everyone clear that a commemorative flag or organizational flag will be flown on a separate flag from that that the U.S. flag and the POW flag are on. So, so if there's one flag and has flags on one pole, if there's one pole has U.S. and POW MA, that's it. If there's two poles, this is saying that the other pole has the state flag, and this is allowing a commemorative flag to go underneath the New Jersey flag on that second pole. So I just want the language to be clear that that's what the case is. Okay. All right. So continue with the roll, please. So I'm just conflicted because I agree that I want to save the PO that I want to make clear that the POW flag is not affected, but I, I don't support any of this on the flagpoles. So I'm conflicted. I'm going to abstain. So yeah, I think I am going to abstain from this vote. Deputy Mayor Clark. Yes. Councilman Hertford. Abstain. Mayor Giarello. Uh, yes. So the motion amended uh, amendment proposed by Councilman Blaney is passed. Um, are there any more other amendments offered to this ordinance? Okay. Hearing none, uh, may I have a motion to adopt the ordinance with the two amendments that we just approved? You can't adopt the ordinance because you, you basically did a, a we can't adopt revisions. It. it has to be republished because there are substantive changes. Okay. So can I? Public hearing at a future meeting. So do we go with what Councilwoman Quinn said to table it uh, in turn, until no, such time that those amendments are? It's going to be reintroduced. Are... It has to go different. all the way back. All the changes. Based on the, what's transpired this far with the, with the uh, amendments to the ordinance, it's essentially you've gotten the votes to approve it, so it's as if it was an ordinance that was just introduced. So then it would have to be published and um, you know, presented for a public hearing unless it were tabled, if that were the next motion. Okay, so if, um, if, well, if it were not tabled and the, uh, the amendments uh, that we uh, approved, um, so the, what, what is the motion and then what is the next step? The next step would be that this ordinance, right. you've already modified it and you voted. It would take no further action tonight. As if this were the introduction, would be treated as an introduced ordinance, it would have to be published, and then uh, there would be a public hearing at, at the next meeting or 
you know, future meeting when it was on the agenda. Okay, so as the gentleman said, you know, he doesn't even know what the changes are. None of us do. So I think it has to be reintroduced in the correct it form. It does have to be reintroduced. This was the introduction, yeah. And you also said something about taking the policy and rewriting that policy as part of the ordinance. So nobody's really seen any of this stuff. So kind of like you need to start from the beginning. Well, yeah, and you said strong word. But, well, I'm just saying you had four or five things. Yep. He had another thing. There's a whole policy that none of us has ever seen. So it sounds like you need to recreate a document. Right, and that's what I think we're saying. The other option so. would be to just to, to direct us to revise the ordinance and present it for uh, introduction at the next meeting rather than having this ordinance that we amended but have, don't have it in a physical document yet with the changes to the policy manual as well, to the it, policy as well. I'm I'm good either way. Well, I'm sorry. I don't want to speak for anybody, but um, I. So uh, I'm I'm con I'm not clear on what the ask is. Do I ask to reintroduce it? Do I ask to um, to rehear it? You ask that we present the ordinance with the amendments for introduction at the next meeting. Okay. Any motion or yes, that, and I suggest doing so, that by motion, and that next time you'll know, have the ordinance with all the revisions, so everyone can see it, along with this, the policy, with the changes that were discussed this evening. If that's the case, then it should be done so that the public can see it before they get here and all these pieces are missing and everything else. Yep, it'll be uh, part of the agenda. Part of, part of the agenda, yes. Right. So may I have a motion to um, to re-hear, or uh, I don't think it's reintroduce, or to recast the ordinance with the amendments that we had approved so that it is, uh, up, uh, it is uh, available for a hearing at the next meeting. Uh, with the inter introduction at the next meeting. So I think it's a cycle again. Okay, so it'd be to be reintroduced at the next meeting uh, with the uh, amendments that we approved and, uh, and and possibly also the policy, merger of the policy with the document, with the ordinance. I'll That's a, a mouthful. I'll make a motion. Thank you for not making me say that again. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we redo that, clarify it, clarify it and reintroduce it. Excellent. May I have a second, please? Yes, I second the motion that we reintroduce uh, this resolution with the uh, this ordinance with the changes as amended tonight. Is there any discussion on that? Okay, may I have a roll call vote, please? Yes. I disagree with any kind of government speech, government. Over, oversight on this at all, and I think it's overreach, and I'm going to say no. Deputy Mayor Clark. Yes. Councilman Hertzberg. No. Mayor Giarello. Yes. Uh, that has passed, and we will reintroduce this at the next meeting, which I believe is March 14. Okay, we have uh, five, uh, yeah, five resolutions available uh, or on the uh, agenda. Uh, is uh, is there any uh, anyone from the public have any comments or questions about any of the resolutions nine through one nine dash one through nine dash five? Okay, hearing none. Um, any um, questions or comments or debate from the dais on resolutions nine dash one through nine dash five? Yes, I have a question about nine dash five. Uh, and maybe this is procedural probably, but I'd like if someone can clarify to me why we would approve a capital budget amendment for the salt shed at this time for the full amount that was initially proposed when we're still exploring, evaluating, and we still are going to have the hearing. It's probably procedural. Can you just explain it to me? Each time you actually do an ordinance, you have to prepare a capital budget. So that is in place for the, for the amount of the ordinance. I mean, we may cut it back, and it won't be that much. We would just cancel it at that point in time and put the money back into surplus or whatever funding source that the money came from. Okay. So if I understand you, it's, it's a account. It's a procedural thing inside the building between accounts. It's not committing us to yes. this amount. Okay. Yes. Basically, every time you incur debt, <clears throat> you have to amend your capital budget to show the amount of debt that you're incurring. Mm -hmm. and, okay. And Basically, that's it. So it's it's more of a practice procedure to, you know, 
You don't have to do it if you're doing a funded project where all the money is coming out of the like capital improvement fund or fund balance or something okay. like that. A, a second question on the, not sure, one, one sheet, I'm not sure which one it is. It's the, uh, the one that has the A, I's and the nays on the top. The second section, uh, column four, estimated completion time. It shows 2022. In the middle there, I think that might be a typo. Yeah, second table, column four. Yeah. Yeah, probably, yeah, it would be 23. It's just a typo. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, so uh, is there a motion to amend resolution 9-5 to make sure that we don't go back in time and complete it last year? Uh, I'll make the motion that we correct that year to 2023. Excellent. May I have a second, please? I second the motion. Okay, any uh, discussion on the change to the uh, resolution 9-5 to make the correction of the year? Okay, hearing none, uh, can I have, uh, is there a motion, uh, uh, actually all those in favor of making that change say aye? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Okay, that resolution 9-5 is amended as uh, we just said to uh, correct column four. Uh, is there, a, um, uh, is there a motion or um, is there a motion to adopt resolutions 9-1 through 9-5? I'll make a motion to adopt or to approve resolutions 9.1 to 9-5. And with 9-5 amended as we just did? Yes. Uh, any second, please? I second the motion. Okay. Um, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Okay, that resolution has passed. All resolutions 9 through 1 uh, through 9-5 have passed. Um, for council liaison reports, um, I'll start with uh, Councilman Blumetti. Any liaison reports? Yes, uh, Environmental Commission, I have three updates. Uh, mentioned earlier this evening, there is a report issued by the Environmental Commission addressed to the Town Council, the Planning Board, Town Manager, and DPW regarding road salt science best practices potential opportunities for us to explore technology, equipment, and also some comments about the salt shed size and scale. Second is there was a conversation at the Environmental Commission the last two meetings. Uh, a resident had asked me, a few actually, what happened to the lithium battery recycling bin or box that we used to have out here in Town Hall in the past. So there's been a little bit of conversation um, I believe it was removed because of concerns about sparking. Um, there's a, an interest to figure out another solution perhaps to provide residents with some place to bring lithium batteries that's safer. Uh, we learned that uh, SCUMA, the MUA, is working with a vendor and has plans to try to get different municipalities involved with having outposts throughout different towns to collect uh, lithium batteries to recycle them and there's also other companies that facilitate it uh, so there's been a conversation in the environmental commission around uh, who these vendors are and if it's a possibility of looking into it more to provide that service to residents location would be a key uh, you know, having it inside is <laughs> I guess presents some risks if it's not if they're not separated and packaged properly in terms of sparking and then finally uh, just a reminder Earth Day Fair out in front here uh, on the lawn Saturday, April 22nd, Earth Day, 11 a.m., 3 p.m. There's going to be exhibitors, a kitty corner. Uh, we are working with the middle, a middle school teacher and her class to collaborate on uh, different events and different things that day. We're also looking at food vendors, a musician, an illusionist, and have reached out to the uh, Sparta High and also Pope John High Earth or Green Clubs to collaborate with them on the on the event. That is it for my liaison reports. Excellent, uh, Deputy Mayor Clark. Um, yes, and uh, we, uh, Mayor Chiarello and I uh, met with um, uh, the president of the school board, uh, Superintendent Beck, um, and uh, one other member of the school board uh, this week and just discussed, you know, areas where uh, we have kind of mutual interests, um, ways that we can be of help to them and ways that they can be of help to us. Um, and uh, part of that 
Um, and we got an update about the, um, the search for additional space for schools. That search is ongoing. Um, the issue, obviously, is, you know, where to put it. Um, and then that, that factors into, obviously, cost. If you can use township property, it's cheaper than having to buy property and then place it there. And there, um, that search is ongoing. And I'll let you add whatever you want to add. No, I think that's um, that was well said. Thanks. I wouldn't go into more detail in it. Okay. Anything else? Any other uh, committee updates? No, I will be attending the uh, board of trustees for Lake Mohawk, which is I was going to go yesterday, but um, the uh, snow had other ideas, so that got canceled and postponed till Wednesday. So I'll I'll be there tomorrow. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilman Hertzberg? Nope, not at this time. Okay, Councilwoman Quinn? Um, yeah, so the health committee met. We had a great meeting. One of the things we talked about was the RAVE system, so we're working with IT to currently look at different ways that we can um, rearrange the notifications in RAVE to better reach our community. That's something that's ongoing. ongoing. And also um, the Salute 07871 committee met. We had a really great brainstorming meeting the other day for things that are going to be ongoing. And uh, we're excited to announce that we received 47 requests for new hometown hero banners this year. So we are super excited about that. And Sam will, like we discussed at the last meeting, will follow the same process. Um, we already used the town vendor, so we'll use the same process and copy you on everything. But I think this is a really great notification, a significant benchmark that this program remains really strong and is very valued. 47 new? Mm -hmm. 47 new? 47 new banners. Wow. Yeah. It's a lot. Okay. And uh, other than that, those are the updates I have at this time. Excellent. Thank you. Um, as for myself, um, the uh, I have no update from Cultural Affairs. They continue to refine their lineup. It's not yet set, but um, we're still early. Uh, library board did not meet in February. They meet again uh, first week of March. And uh, the Board of Ed meeting um, we talked about already. Um, so uh, you might notice that we, uh, in, in the agenda, uh, rather than refer to it as old business, we're referring to it as unfinished business uh, and separating from anything new that we haven't brought up yet. So in terms of unfinished business, um, Councilwoman Quinn, do you have anything to discuss? We have two items that are fixed on the agenda, but anything other than those, which we'll get back to? No. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Hertzberg? No. Nope. Uh, Deputy Mayor Clark? No. And Councilman Blumetti? None. Okay, for zoning board, uh, we do have two uh, vacancies for alternate positions on the zoning board that uh, have not been filled. Uh, is there a motion to, uh, to nominate uh, someone for the zoning board? So I would like to, we're doing them one at a time? Or two? Let's do it one at a time. So Please. I'd like to nominate And did we get? Um, mm -hmm. I didn't have it written down. Okay. So there's a motion to nominate Ann LaPouch. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any uh, comment or uh, debate? May I have a roll call vote, please? What was, was the application submitted? I don't think I've seen the application. I would say that. Um. And served on the uh, subcommittee as well with the planning board, which is really good depth of knowledge. So that must have come in before this year, right? I guess. Because uh, anything came, uh, it did not come in this year, at least to my knowledge. Okay, so the motion was made and seconded. Um, uh, any other discussion before we vote? And on January 25th. I do not have that. Okay. I don't see it. Okay. Anything? Um, any discussion? Uh, I haven't had an opportunity to see because I'm looking at what I have on our. It came in in 2023, so I don't think it would be uh, on. You know what the problem is? It says zoning. It says planning board. 
for both first choice and second choice. I think that's maybe why I didn't see it. Not zoning. Okay. So we, we're sure that the planning or zoning. No, we're well. Right now, we're, there are only two alternate vacancies on the zoning board. There's no alternates for the planning board, so we're voting for zoning. I thought, I thought she was putting in for planning or zoning. It doesn't make sense. To put, I understand that both are selected, but that makes no sense. Yeah, she might have made a mistake on it. Well, one, no, one says planning board, and the other choice was planning board subcommittee. Apparently, that's that was the second choice. Um, so different was, options. Yeah, she was Okay, may I have a roll call vote, please, or is that, unless there's any other discussion? So we don't, so her, in her application, she hasn't identified whether she wants to be on zoning board. Those are two different boards with distinct jurisdiction and responsibilities. So maybe, would, maybe we could leave one spot open and just double check with her. She'd be an asset, in my opinion, to the board. She has very good knowledge and great perspective. Um, so it, maybe we could just appoint one and then leave one spot. Okay, well the motion was made and and, um, and seconded, so um, unless it, you want to re uh, retract it. Um, so I'll just retract it until we can find out what she's <coughs> interested in that. Okay, do we vote to second the attraction, the retraction of the, I think we need to. Retracted is. It was made and seconded. Yeah, then I will vote to accept. Okay, is there a second to um, so the, the motion is made to, I guess, retract that nomination. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, um, say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstain? Okay. So we're back to two alternate vacancies on the zoning board. Are there any other um, nominations? Okay. I would like to make a nomination myself. I nominate uh, Kate Madison for a uh, zoning board position. Is there a second? I second the motion. Okay. Is there any comment? I have a comment, a concern. Again, respectfully, we've been warned about deputy mayor, the deputy mayor placing people on the zoning and planning boards. And so I seriously have a concern. Again, I'm voicing it. I think that we should heed the advice of our council, our township attorney, and you know, I, I have serious concerns about us moving forward like this. We've been counseled numerous times that this is not a good path forward, that there is a risk of litigation, and now we're doing it again. Any other comment on the application? Or the nomination? And just so noted, and my, my comments uh, that I made in, on January 5th uh, still apply. Um, and, you know, just add it doesn't affect my uh, objectivity nor independence of judgment. Are you off the lawsuit now? Yeah, a motion has been made to, um, to take me off uh, the appeal. That's before the Superior Court right now. Right now, you're on that, the but the, that had nothing to do with a conflict. What it has to do with is um, I am one man with a lot of responsibilities, and I don't have the bandwidth to um, take on uh, litigation. So it's not related to the conflict. It's just related to my time that I can't devote the time um, that would be necessary. So just to be clear again, the boards pick their attorneys. You are in litigation against both boards. So placements that you make to these boards, what you're doing is you're putting people in place that are going to pick the attorneys that you are arguing against that a lawsuit you're involved with is going to argue against. The, state, the lawyers right now have been effective, and the, the lawsuit that you guys brought was already dismissed once. So the conflict is that by you putting people on these boards, you are directly putting people on boards that are going to be selecting the attorneys you're arguing against on both boards. He knows that. I just want the public to understand yeah. that because it, I would never, I would never have understood that until I served on boards. Well, the taxpayers are going to find out soon enough. Well, um, one, the I don't get to decide who the planning board decides for their lawyer. They decide. I don't get to decide. They do, um, and so I don't have any role in that. 
Now, if you would like to talk about conflicts, maybe perhaps now is the time. Um, I think that if we're going to talk about conflicts, let's talk about um, both of yours. Okay. Okay. Well, um, let's talk about why you, Mr. Hertzberg, have been uh, called Mr. Warehouse. In fact, this isn't coming from me. This is coming from your own party. This is coming from your own party to say that you and, and I don't sit on the planning party. board. You sat on the planning board, and you have now been accused by someone within your same own party of being Mr. Party? Warehouse. Oh, would you like me to read it to you? I will read it to you. Well, if it's on social media, it must it's be. Not on, no, it's not on social media. Okay. This was yeah, a, it was a campaign article. It was a campaign article? Yes. Oh, even better. Clearly factual. Well, what? Uh, you've... <laughs> If, if we're going to lay that out there, I think the, the concern and the concern was made about both of you having a conflict. This was predated me being involved in town council whatsoever, related to your relationship between the ILA and the operating years local 825. <laughs> right? And that the local so 825 has, been, has, has given their endorsement to the warehouse specifically, and they've considered you a brother. And in fact, uh, Ms. Quinn, I understand that you have a family relationship and that you also one of the members of your family is with the ILA as well. And so tell me, what, what does the ILA have to do with the warehouse? Explain I don't know. That. Maybe you should ask the operating engineers who somehow had a copy of the design, redesigned warehouse before the public did. You know, the ILA and the engineers have a conflict. They're not, they're not hanging out together and sharing documents. But you wouldn't know that because you just like making stuff up. I'm not making stuff up. Oh, no, you've made a lot of stuff up. That's how you got elected. Well, well I just find it. We'll air all that out, too. You can air whatever you want out. Plan but two. all I can say is that a conflict was brought to the attention of this council related to both you and Mrs. Quinn about the warehouse, and you sat on the planning board. I do not sit on the planning board. And you sat and you oversaw the application for the warehouse when someone that you have a financial interest in has yeah. expressed it, the yeah. operating engine of 825. I have a financial That's interest a in the operating engine. Yeah. That's the a lie. It's a basic Through the ILA? You, you have be no careful. idea what you're talking about. You had better be careful. Zero. That's not true. <laughs> Just like all the other stuff before you got here that you were posting all over Facebook and social media. But now you're in a different seat. So I would suggest that well, you're You already insulted an employee tonight. That's going to be fun. And I'll tell you something else. I don't know who you think you are, but I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm the one that sent the warehouse back, and I'm the one that sat on the subcommittee. So don't sit there with that condescending tone right. and try to deflect I, when we're calling I think you we out need to get back to something that our legal counsel did. If, there, if our legal counsel had come to any of us and said there's a perception or something out there, legal, legit, that was a conflict, I assure you, I would have accused myself, but there's not. Only what you make up. So there you go. Can we take the discussion back to the uh, motion on the table to consider the uh, application for the zoning board of uh, Kate Madison? That has been made and seconded. Any uh, but a discussion on that point specifically? Okay, may I have a roll call vote, please? Yes. I'm not, I'm abstaining. Deputy Mayor Clark. Yes. No. Yes, that nomination has passed. Is there another nomination for the zoning board? Okay, hearing none. Um, we will move on to a second discussion that was on the agenda for uh, recasting the or for just a discussion of the Economic Development Committee. Uh, just for context, uh, the, um, the committee was not, uh, we did not, had not appointed any members for this year. Uh, for the, and the reason we did that was to have a discussion of what we think should be the, the, the proper scope of the committee. Um, and for clarification, the committee was formed from Resolution 5-5 from November 21, 2006. And that resolution stated the following goals of the committee. The committee actually was, was, was formed as an advisory board to the planning board uh, with these goals. 
Number one, to make a study and survey of the opportunities of the township for business expansion and development redevelopment. Number two, develop lists of businesses that would be best suited to the township and its zoning and master plan. Number three, make reports to the township manager and council as to the development of the non-residential areas of the township. Number four, recommend to the township manager and council of planning board desirable, suitable areas within the township for research, office light, uh, light manufacturing, commercial and other retail business activities. Number five, recommend to the manager, council and planning board reasonable and desirable restrictions concerning potential non-residential sites. And number six, the, the, environment, the Economic Development Committee shall prepare and distribute material and data advertising the advantages of the township for the purpose of attracting appropriate non-residential development. Um, and so I think the discussion I wanted to have is uh, whether or not those are the appropriate goals, and if not, then what should, uh, what do we feel those goals should be? I believe I emailed you what the prior committee had changed to their goals. Okay, did you, um, did you want to read that, or did you want me to? I also specifically made a move at the last meeting, asked that this be part, made part of the agenda so that the public could read it and see it, and you agreed that it would be, but it's not. I didn't uh, purposely not take it off the agenda, so that wasn't part of the package. I asked that when the discussion came on that this be added so that people from the public could see it. Okay. I, I do remember that you said that. I make a motion we table this so that that can be done. I second it. People should see what we're talking okay. about. Any debate on that? I, th I mean, I, I think we should have, it should be specific about what we want, the nature and scope of the Economic Development Committee, and have it on a piece of paper that people can see what the nature and scope is and be able to have feedback on it. And so, I, I mean, I would agree to table it until we can have an actual document that really is specific about what it is we want this uh, newly constituted. Um, well, hang on, that's, I'm sorry to interrupt. Finish that. Uh, that's it. Um, the, the goal of this discussion is to come up with what we want, what the council wants to uh, that committee to look like and what the scope would be and what the um, um, makeup would be. Um, so this discussion has to happen before we can state to the public what that would be. Uh, I think the motion on the table is to present something that was crafted a couple of years ago uh, based on what the committee had come up with on their own. I think that's a separate discussion. Well, I think then that what, and you correct me if I'm wrong, which is then all we're doing then is what Councilwoman Quinn wants is that in the discussion uh, that we include for discussion is whether to adopt um, the scope and uh, mission as stated um, in that prior um, scope and mission that I think uh, Council, uh, Councilman Hertzberg submitted and whether we want to adopt that for going forward. And for um, the record, that was crafted with the input of the committee by Janice, who had been in that role and been involved in the town for decades doing that. And she drafted it based on input of the local businesses. I mean, there's one thing we can do. We can use that as the starting point or as the basis and, you know, not necessarily use it as is, but use that some of those elements in there that um, she'd come up with and that she believed at that time were important, and a lot of them are, but use that as a basis and then make sure that we're molding it to what we see as a need now and what we want the EDC to, to represent and be. Well, if we're going to do that, then we need to get all the pieces of the puzzle together so that we can see where we're pulling from and then be transparent, there's a thought, with everybody about what we're crafting and how we're crafting and where the information is coming from that we're using to put this document together rather than showing up here with bits and pieces of things. Um, and I don't know if you guys have had a chance to review it. I read it two and a half weeks ago when we received it. And honestly, I think it's got a lot of merit. I saw that you guys reached out to the league, the county SCEBP, to get some ordinances. I believe there were two or three of them that you guys got. I read through those. But I think it's very important when you're looking at economic development in different municipalities throughout the county versus uh, different, the way that economic development is done here in Sparta. So I, I'm not negating that it's good to have that as background information, but I don't think you could just take it and apply it to Sparta when it comes from a different municipality because the landscape is different here. I think we should possibly start with what Janice, God rest her, God rest her soul, came up with and then build around that rather than the other way, 
rather than taking what other municipalities have and then just taking little bits and pieces. There is nobody that is in this community that has worked more with the businesses over the decades than Janice. So. Yeah, I, I think what we're talking about is, frankly, the weight at which to give, you know, uh, what Janice has done. Well, I think, if I hear you correctly, what you would like is that it be given uh, almost sole weight in, in consideration. And I understand your reasons for doing that, and those are good reasons. Um, I think my understanding of that is, is what we're doing is we're considering that will be one of the factors that we'll look at in, de in, in defining what the scope of this will be. Um, and I understand it's your position you would want that to be have much more credence over these other um, uh, ED uh, ordinances that we've gotten from other townships. So I, I appreciate that, and I think that's that's well taken, and it's something that we should consider. Well, what were you guys coming here tonight with? Well, I, first of all, I, 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 you keep saying you guys. So I don't say. I have notes I wrote a few weeks ago based on Janice's and based on the samples that we saw, and just a little bit of research and just some thoughts about. If we're gonna, if we're going to do this. What do we want it to be about? So for me, this is a process question. Like, how do we collaborate to get the right things into something, and then we can put it together. That we talk to each other, and that we can absolutely do. Yeah. If we don't do it in a in larger than three. No, I, I disagree. I'm sorry, I interrupted. Go ahead. Well, it doesn't matter if you like it or not. That's how it goes. No, we but can, I. We can absolutely talk amongst ourselves, even though I'm sure you don't want us to, but we can. We can talk amongst ourselves about any topic on here, as long as we are not speaking in a group of three, which represents a majority of this council. You should know that, Dan. You've been here for four years. We can, if he has a question or he's got ideas, he can reach out to me, I can reach out to him, and we can talk about it and get prepared and start brainstorming to collectively bring ideas here. It doesn't have to be each of the five people shows up at a meeting with five completely different things. We absolutely can talk about things before we get here. There's no reason why we can't. And what I disagree with is um, I think we're all here right now, and we can have a discussion right now. I don't have to have one-off discussions with individual people as long, as long as we're not having a majority. I think we're the people that make the sandwiches. We're behind the sandwich screen. Everybody gets to make, watch us make the sandwiches, and we should make the sandwiches. And so I put the, I have to put this on the agenda so that we can have a public discussion. Hey, what do you think the Economic Development Committee should look like? What do you think? What do you think? And build off of those ideas and, and air it out in public with all of us watching and then from that we can craft what we what we think the consensus is that was my intention here we did that with the hunting and we did that we're going to do that I wanted to do that here so that's why this is on the agenda I don't think that I, I, I would prefer to have an open public discussion of this and rather than have one-off things and then come up with something that may or may not be a consensus I don't know well, I, I believe I had made a motion to table it so we could put that document out in the public so this could be a more public discussion I'll it second was, that. It was second but it was second and then I did second it. Yeah, yeah. Did. So, uh, discussing that document uh, personally, I uh, I uh, I found some good parts in it. I found I found some parts that I did not uh, like in that document. I thought you had sent that to the the clerk, and it didn't appear on the agenda. And um, I guess we'll we'll take responsibility for that because I I thought it would be as well. But we'll make sure it's on the agenda for next week. If we want to table this discussion and have this same discussion in public next week, we find. But. Um, Again, I would prefer to, we're all here, we can talk, we can feed off of each other, and and let's have an open discussion of this, yes, having that document. I'm not saying that discussions that we have with each other negate what we talk about in the public, because obviously any action that we take, we take here. But we should come to the table, at least understanding, and maybe we could get some great ideas, I don't know, working together. Maybe we could, you know. Right, and I want to work together in public together ideas. right now. This to me is together. Right. But we have the ability to do that before we even get here. And maybe we can come with something that the public, instead of the public having to sift through pieces of stuff, maybe collectively we could give the public something together that they could look at and review. I also wanted the public to participate in this discussion. In fact, uh, I had asked um, uh, someone from the public to come in. Uh, last time, from the, someone from the public did comment, and because it appeared on the agenda and the public knew that we were going to have this discussion. And it's on the agenda today, and the public knew and expected this to be under discussion, uh, to have input into it. So, again, to this is designed to be an open discussion of this. Sorry, I was just going to say again, to me, this just seems like a, a process question. So, you know, one way to do it is, okay, we all come back in next meeting, and we have, what are the five most important things we believe in EDC, EDC should do, or ten, whatever. And we just talk about it, and we modify it, and we kind of, you know, build it from there based on the original that Janice wrote a few years ago. 
and we talk about what's the, what are the, what's the most important objectives for it, where does it fit in? And we would go through it that way. I mean, it sounds a little bit structured, too structured maybe, but I don't know. It's better than not have each of us write something up, right? releasing something to the public too soon, where everybody's reacting to it, and it doesn't encapsulate all of our views. If we think that the only collaboration and work we're going to do is sitting at this dais, we're not going to get anything done. I'm not speaking absolutes. In any case, the motion is made and seconded that we um, include in the agenda, I suppose for the next meeting, the, um, the starting, the document that was drafted by Janice Stevens that uh, framed the, the scope of the work of the uh, Economic Development Committee. Um, so I guess we're voting to, to see if that is included in the agenda. So I think implicit in that is we would, we would move this discussion. The floor was the table. That was the vote, and I seconded it. So the did, and to add that to the next agenda with the document. So the motion. Okay, it's the table to and to add the agenda. agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're discussing that. Um, I did have a number of, uh, like I said, I, I came prepared for a number of uh, my own observations or suggestions for the committee. Um, but I guess we can table this discussion too. Uh, and, and so I guess with the thing in mind that everybody come prepared at the next meeting, as Councilman Blumetti said, uh, let's have a. Um, comes with some ideas. We have a starting point with uh, the document from Ms. Stevens, uh, and we'll, we'll start over again. Um, so um, before I, I would like to, to introduce, ask the public if the public have any uh, input into this, but um, I think we can move forward with the motion to, that was made on the floor to table it and include it and then open it up to the public if they have any questions about unfinished business. Uh, about the Economic Development Committee, because people are from the public, I think, are, might be here f for that discussion. So may I have a roll call vote, please, to table it? Yeah, one clarifying comment. So I totally believe we should table this and do this the right way, and it could include coming back next time with our own thoughts and notes. It also definitely could include conversations over the next three weeks with one other person to fine-tune this and share thoughts. But um, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of releasing the one version out there as part of the public agenda for next meeting. And just having that be the starting point, I think we should. I think it's premature. Yeah, I don't necessarily believe that that's a starting point. Uh, and so, but it is a um, an artifact that would help this discussion. Yeah, I think the public should know that. I mean, that because we have at least two council members who believe that very strongly that that is a, um, a very not only the starting point, but may even be the ending point. Um, for the Economic Development Committee. So I think that um, given its importance, um, as opposed to maybe some other ideas that are still formulating, I would, I would think that we need to publish that and so people can see it. Okay. May I have a roll call vote? So I'm sorry, so, so just to restate what we're voting on, we're voting to do two things. One, to table it, and number two, to make sure that that, uh, docu that uh, artifact that we referred to is on the uh, agenda, collection of agenda items for the next meeting. May I have a roll call vote, please? Uh, Councilman Blumetti. No. Councilman Quinn. Yes. Deputy Mayor Clark. Yes. Councilman Hertzberg. Yes. Mayor Giro. Yes. That motion is passed. Uh, let me pause here. Is there anyone from the public that wants to uh, contribute to, to the discussion of the Economic Development Committee, or we can hold off until the next meeting? Luciana, Nine Walk Wood Trail. Um, so in, initially it was the understanding that the Economic Development Committee was supposed to be an advisory board to the Planning Board. Um, and, and, you know, to, to that point, um, I would like to understand, being a member, a current member of the Planning Board, how um, any changes that may be made to, to the Economic Development Committee will impact the Planning Board going forward. The committee was always an advisory board to the council. To the council, not the planning board. Actually, that's not true. It was to, it was uh, it was formed as an advisory board to the planning board. That might be how it was formed, but that's not that was not the use when, when no. I got here. Well, that's actually part of the point is that it was operating outside that, of the scope uh, of what it was honestly, doing. Honestly, that, that's that's to my point. Was that my my understanding was that 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 this was the initial inception. So, how how is what what's intending to be done? going to, to change and or impact the... It depends on what it ends up looking like when we're done recreating. Yeah, we, yeah. we won't know that. I can't answer that because I don't know what it's going to look like when we're done. 
but it was a very valuable board. It was the voice to the businesses. It was the bridge to the businesses. And that's good information for the board. I mean, I think clearly so. policy gets pushed from the council to the planning board. I think it should be advisory to the council. But that's one suggestion. It will, uh, that's what I'm saying. I think we can't answer that right now because we don't right. know what it's going to look like when it's done. So at, one, at what point, I know you, you just mentioned that, that it became advisory to the council. So do, do we have any idea how, at what point that morphed from, from it being I advisory think. to planning to, to council and, you know, with... Things that were done, I guess, by policy or by office direction were clearly not put into the policies for the township. They weren't changed. They weren't ratified in any kind of vote. So I don't know when that happened. So there were no formal changes. It's just it just it just became the the. the That's convention. how they were operating when I got here. That was one of the issues that I had uh, um, for the last couple of years. Is that the planning board, the economic development committee, was operating outside of its if its stated scope, and that the committee took it upon itself at some point to change its scope, and that change uh, can only be made by the. The, the body that created it, which is the council. So, uh, one of the, the, the my main one of my main reasons for this discussion is to bring this in line with what everybody agrees the committee should be doing. Yeah, the other boards that we found information on, um, it looked to me like they were advisory to the council, not any specific board. So, I guess it's going to depend on in our discussions where we feel it needs to go, because huh. different municipalities do it. Different. No, no, completely understood. You know, so so at the end of the day, you know, uh, us being a relatively new planning board, trying to understand where, you know, where all the moving parts are, um, where we can get our information, how we can get our information. So trying to have a better understanding of, of you know, this portion of the discussion. I do have to say I am slightly disappointed because I did come here specifically for this portion of the conversation, um, only because I wanted to understand that a, a little bit more in terms of um, what was what was going on with us and what our intention is. Um, you know, in terms of, of helping Sparta, you know, be more of Sparta. <laughs> God bless you. Bless you. The other thing that was sort of unspoken was on the planning board for years. Jerry Murphy was on there. He was on the economic. And then um, Councilman Hertzberg was on there from economic. So there were always, until, until this year when everything was changed, there were always representatives. So there's representatives. Some of them are by statute, but there were representatives from that board on the planning board. Um, that, rep yeah, that could convey that information back and forth. So it's probably that's how things started getting mushed together, like because different things started happening, but to the point that he made, it might not have been documented, it just sort of happened. Um, but that's what we're going to clean up. And, and, and maybe I apologize if I put you on the spot, but I'm going to put you on the spot. Absolutely. All right. What would be your preference? Do you want them to advise the planning board or, you know, what would, you know, what, you're on the planning board. Would you like to hear from the Economic Development Committee um, advising the planning board? I would, I would actually, I mean, if, I, if I'm given the opportunity to, to throw out what I would like to see, yes, that would be my preference um, because we're charged with, um, we're charged with land use. We're charged with what, what we're hoping to see and what, what we're hoping to um, push forward the vision of, of the legacy of what, what our community is going to look like going forward. So we would like to be able to understand what types of businesses want to be here, how we can help cultivate, um, you know, economic development going forward, decide, you know, um, with, with another body, bounce things off of, of another body and be able to determine what might be appropriate in certain, in certain areas. Um, we have a lot of don'ts that we want to, you know, throw out there or that people want to talk about at this moment in time. And I, you know, I mean, I've been hearing a lot of negativity and I want to turn those don'ts into do's in terms of, you know, okay, fine, we may not want to see certain things happen in certain areas, but we need to be mindful of what we want to put in place of those specific, you know, items. And, and having input from an economic development committee might be able to um, facilitate that for us. Right. So, the, other thing, the other thing is, I believe, and this goes back to when I, I was on council in the beginning, the economic, or the, uh, yeah, the EBC, got intertwined with the council through the website. So they worked with the council to have a portion of the website to build their own um, website that really created Well, we asked and for that so we could the support the businesses, right? Right. So I think that's when it sort of became, and again, you may want to go back to thinking about having someone on the planning board that is on that committee that could be the liaison because 
there is a lot of marketing and different things that that committee wants to do that is not going to fall in line with land use management necessarily. So I think that's where you have to be careful. Not everything that that committee did, like holding forums and, and the meetings and all that stuff, tied back to land use. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important that you understand if they have land use recommendations, what they might be or their perspective in a specific place. So you may want to rethink having a spot on that planning board to be someone that's on the Economic Development Committee so they could serve as liaison, like we always did with environmental and zoning and the rest. It might be something to think about down, down the line. Definitely. I mean, if, if we can't have something that's that's going to, to collaborate with us directly, then definitely, obviously, we would want to have some type of, of connection um, at, at some point. Um, you know, obviously, since we're a full board, wouldn't be a, a voting member, but, but definitely somebody who, who could be a liaison who could help us facilitate, you know, the process. So or definitely under advisement. liaison from the planning board to the EDC. Well, usually it was the council member that would attend the EDC. Usually that was Correct. you mm -hmm. that would attend the EDC meeting to bring that back. I would love to hear the thoughts of, of um, either uh, either of the other councilmen on, on this particular subject in terms of liaising and, and where uh, where they think that things might, might fall or should fall. I'll offer two things. One, um, if you want to take some time to collect your thoughts and if you have some ideas, uh, please send... Uh, us an email, you can send it to all five of us or to me individually, I'll distribute it to the rest of the group uh, and we'll have that to consider as we put our thoughts together. Uh, so I'm hoping, I'm expecting that by the next meeting we'll have um, a, a discussion where everybody will come forward to say, I think we should do this, I think we should do this, and then that we'll have some ideas on the table. Um, secondly, I, I for just to, I guess, a preview, a couple of things, um, uh, uh, I, a couple of things that I noted. One is that I would like this committee to be focused on small business development, uh, and so I would I would even rename it to a, a small business or even a business development committee rather than an economic development committee. Um, I, um, I I used to own um, commercial property uh, for many years, and I and I I still feel the sting when I see a, 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 a an open store with a for rent sign on it. Uh, it hurts and it it's hard. So um, I, I think helping out small businesses should be uh, first and foremost. Uh, for this committee. I think this committee should focus on <clears throat> policy and, administ and administrative changes, because uh, that's what we do. We, we do policy in this board, uh, and it, the administration does its thing, and I think that this should be sort of an ombudsman or a conduit for our business community to say, here's what you can do better. Um, um, and then um, as far as its uh, makeup, um, I had written down <clears throat> that there would be one liaison to the Sparta Chamber of Commerce, because I think there's kind of an, uh, there should be some kind of synergy between the uh, a board like this that would focus on policy and administration changes versus a, another organization like the Chamber of Commerce that would focus on advocacy. And I don't think that we need to form, we create another advocacy board because the Chamber of Commerce does a very good job at advocacy. So um, I've spoken with members, as, as the councilman mentioned, uh, the Chamber, and I think having a representative on the, on the uh, ADC to do that, um, to liaison, I think would be a good idea. Uh, so one member of the chamber, one member of the planning board, I think, is a good idea. Um, and then three small business owners and two residents uh, that are not small business owners of the town. And then have uh, at least one council member who is uh, not a formal member of the board, but a, a liaison to the board. So the board would be made up of seven people. Anyway, th and those are so my comments. You have, you're including the council member as a liaison? As a liaison, right. Just like as the, uh, the environmental commission that the council member is a liaison, not a member of the commission itself. So can a liaison member vote, Angela? Say so how you set it up, exactly. They don't usually vote. I was going to say. Yep. They don't really vote or anything. Okay. Just like in the environmental commission, the, the liaison is not a voting member. It's just a, the there to hang out and so you know, bring the donuts. So the liaison for environmental is not a voting position? That's correct. It's actually, the liaison is not a member of the commission, of the environmental okay. commission. So. Anyway, that's my thoughts. And, uh, I mean, I, I think that for the, um, I agree with you. I think that the Economic Development Committee should uh, be able to weigh in to the planning board um, because as you list the uh, don'ts, um, and if we're going to make this Economic Development Committee, one of the things I think Mayor Chiarella said is, is policy, and land use is policy. And so as you list the don'ts, we, you know, it would be helpful to know the economic impact of those don'ts. 
and the economic impact of the dues. And so I think they, um, I would, you know, that would be one factor that the planning board should consider when it's making planning decisions is, okay, we, the, the, you know, the Economic Development Committee has weighed in on this. They said, you know, X, and I think we need to take that into consideration. What weight you give it is completely up to you uh, as, you know, with respect to your responsibilities on the planning board. Um, and so, so in the same way that the Environmental Commission weighs in on various matters as they did today about the salt shed ordinance. And so it's something that we're able to consider. Um, I would, you know, how that works, whether it's through a liaison, whether it's through they report to you and have a presentation, uh, we can leave for another day. But I agree that it should be something that they, they talk to you about, um, particularly as you undergo, um, if you do undergo changes to any of the zoning and, and, and planning or whatever it is, um, I think that they, 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 can, they have a role to play there, and they should. I won't, I won't beat a dead horse. I, I think essentially the EDC, or, or whatever we call it, to me has to be aligned with and support the master plan. Uh, they have to share the same vision. And, you know, whether that includes conversations around, you know, a walkable community center or types of shops or businesses you want in certain places, they have to tie together. And that would help drive what the EDC's mission is and what they are promoting, supporting, encouraging kind of where their focus is. So, uh, you know, the logistics of whether it's a liaison and all that, we'll figure that out. But I think there's a, a tie-in necessarily uh, because of the master plan and because the vision is the vision. So they all should align to what the vision for the town is, land use, occupants in terms of businesses, things like that. So I think they're they all tie together. Yeah. Did we answer your question? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Thanks for coming today. Thanks a lot. Um, anyone else from the public? Okay, so the motion was to table, which we <laughs> didn't really do a good job of tabling, but uh, we'll continue this discussion at the next meeting. Uh, may I have a roll call vote to table and also to add to the agenda items the aforementioned document from Jenna Stevens? Yes, we did. did we all vote everybody? Yeah. We did vote everybody. We voted to table it's, 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 <laughs> We didn't. Right Sorry. It's a long night. Okay, um, that takes care of all of us. Any new business? I, I do have one one piece of new business. It's um, I guess this is more directed towards Sam and, and Angelo, perhaps. The New Jersey State Plan endorsement topic I wanted to bring up, um, just to learn some more about the process and the timing, uh, especially especially with respect to the town center. I, I understand from some conversations that I believe March. There's a deadline in March that we would need to at least signify that we want to stay in the pipeline and that we're looking for a state plan endorsement to continue and we're going to be working on it. I didn't want to make sure that was on the radar and I wanted to hear from others what they thought about that, especially regarding the, the town center. So just to let you know, with regards to that application, we had a subcommittee that was in place by mayoral appointment. We met. There's a vision statement. It's already in place. It was submitted to the board, I believe. Um, that was the first piece of putting in a good plan endorsement. Unfortunately, all the members that were on it were voted off the board. Mm -hmm. So maybe you want to go back to Tom Collins or someone wants to go back to Tom Collins. They have the vision statement that the committee worked on. And that committee, to my understanding, would still be in place should we have to move forward in this process. I don't know. We have to check with Tom to find out. Um, how that works because it is the, that term does not have expiring terms. Yeah, so it's for the duration of the project. So okay, there is a vision statement. Tom Collins, I believe, has the draft of the vision statement. I don't think it was ever moved forward um, okay. because of obvious, uh, you know, changes. But a draft of that statement already exists. Okay, Tom, Tom is the one that mentioned to me about the pending deadline for March. So there must be something that the council or the township needs to submit to signify that, yes, we still want to do this and we want to continue this and we are going to execute, I guess, that plan. But it's a draft. It's, it needs to be reviewed. It needs to be, you know, action needs to be taken on it because we never got a chance to move it forward. Yeah. So, yeah. so any, any suggestions on how we proceed? Uh, probably should get a hold of Mr. Collins because, again, if it's on a board level, it doesn't necessarily 
come back to the mayor and council until which time it will be ready and to complete. Yeah, I, I think I could be wrong. I think he implied that the notification needs to come from the town manager or the mayor or the council at this stage to signify to New Jersey that we are planning on proceeding to keep us in the pipeline. So maybe we can check offline to see what has to happen by March. Well, we have the chair of the planning board here, so why don't we ask her to reach out? It would go through the planning board, not us. It would go from the planning board to the council and then back like it always does. Well, I think the letter of notification needs to come from the council or the mayor. That's what I was told. My understanding of it is that there's background things that need to be in place, so that's what we need to check. Yeah, I think that's for the full submission. I think this is just to move the clock forward. That's the way I understand Somebody's it. Somebody's just got to so have some Somebody needs yeah. to get yeah. Tom Collins yeah. and figure it out. If I might. Yes. Um, so we were advised by Tom that, uh, yes, there, there, is, there is a deadline, and yes, the, the vision statement is, is, has been started. But the, the issue is that regardless of, of any other work, we're not going to be able to get an application or, or the full renewal in by that March deadline. So he had advised us to come to the council and ask for some type of letter of, uh, you know, or something stating that the intention is that we're going to move forward, whether it come from the mayor or other members of the council. I need to clarify that, and I will. Um, but, but he did say very clearly that we needed to come to the council and get some type of documentation to notify the state to allow them to understand that we are going to move forward and proceed. So then he just needs to send an uh, email to us and to Sam so we can get that for you. The specifics. Okay. Yes, yeah, specifically. Like he, maybe there's a template or a boilerplate that he can use that he knows. And then Sam will probably have to put that together and put it on stationary and then get it signed and out. It sounds like that might also need a resolution, too, if it needs a, a council appointment. A council approval, I'm sorry. As far as I'm aware, it does require council approval. Right. So, so that, that wouldn't come from me. It would have to come from the council. So I think that requires a resolution. Okay. okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Any thanks other new business? Uh, nope, that was it. Thank Just you. On the radar. Um, Deputy Mayor Clark? Uh, no new business. Um, Councilman Hartsburg? No. Councilwoman Quinn? No. Okay, I've got a couple of things. Um, number one, at our last meeting we, we passed a resolution to recognize Franklinite as the New Jersey State Mineral. I'm happy to say that it, the bill had passed out of the Assembly Committee unanimously, and now it heads to the uh, vote for uh, the full Assembly vote. Uh, secondly, um, there was some discussion of, of um, capturing statistics from our website to see what news articles might be uh, kept, uh, might, might be accessed by the public or might get more attention to others uh, that would uh, yield a whole discussion of web analytics and at this hour um, at this time it's probably not appropriate to have that discussion but uh, I think maybe I might uh, mention to all the council members if you have any ideas about what types of information you would want to see gathered from our website, maybe we can funnel that into, um, you know, start to collect some thoughts on that and funnel that into the town manager. Um, next uh, meeting uh, uh, is the first meeting in March, and March is Women's History Month. Uh, we do have a, uh, hopefully we'll have a couple of guests here. I have invited uh, women, the people from the Women's Club and the Junior Women's Club to join us and receive the proclamation for recognizing that. Uh, and also we're trying to um, collect, I don't know if Roxanne, do you want to mention, or, or is it too soon to, we're trying to also get some guests, uh, 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 people, uh, women have, who have participated in government and administration of the, of the uh, Sparta's history to hopefully join us that day as well. Um, uh, I received uh, from Councilman Quinn a proposal for the Donate Life Month, which I believe is in April, so we're, I, I think we're moving forward with that, it's in April, and I, I think I saw your, another note about that today, so. I don't know what needs to be done other than to say, yes, well, well. All she needs is verification that I'm probably for you, Sam. The original request came in February 6th, then February 16th. All she's looking for is so that she doesn't, is not outside putting up ribbons and gets arrested or something. So if you could just send her back. We usually do the teal. We set the lights in teal. We've done this every year for like the past I five years. I think I got a copy of that, so. Just double check your inbox. If, if you don't have it, call me tomorrow and I'll resend it. I think you. The, uh, I sent it. She copied it. 
but if you could just get back to it. If you don't have it in your notes, I'll resend it to you. But actually, I can resend it to you now. But she send just needs some kind of confirmation. Not work, not the, uh, I can send it in all your stuff.net. <clears throat> SpartaNG.net. I don't, I don't get any of those. <laughs> you don't get .net? That's good to know. Okay. Which which email address works okay. for you? Dot org. Dot org. Okay. Cool. Um, all right. Um, and next, I wanted to ask real quick. Uh, get a poll from people on, on the, uh, the side of the dais. Uh, there's some. We're going to have a budget workshop coming soon. What the budget will be put together. Um, there. Uh, in the past, this had been done on a Saturday morning, nine o'clock ish. Everybody gather around and look at the budget. Uh, last year, uh, we had uh, done it at, at an evening. Uh, an evening, a weekday evening is probably best uh, for the public if the public wants to participate in the workshop. Um, so the question now is, um, which do we prefer, a weekend or a, a week a weeknight? And um, I right now have um, no opinion, weeknight? Weeknight's fine with me. Weeknight's fine with me. Council one Klein, any ideas? Okay. So if you want to, once, once it's ready, we'll choose a weeknight, probably off cycle. I've got preliminary numbers put together now. It looks like I'm pretty sure that, you know, again, I can put it together with no municipal tax increase this year. Okay. Uh, I'm not speaking for the words of the county, but, um, but basically the municipal rate probably will stay the same. Okay. That's excellent. Thank you. Which would be basically the eighth year in a row. That is nice. Um, okay, so that said, um, uh, this week is Read Across America Week. Uh, I uh, we had the schools were closed today, but uh, I was going to read it uh, on uh, today. And then, but I also have something scheduled for for Thursday, and, and everyone from the council was availed of uh, the opportunity. I don't know if anybody else uh, did that, but um, uh, that's this week. Uh, and lastly, I did participate in a local in the in the New Jersey governor's call for local and county government conference call and. It focused on the New Jersey state budget, um, and the only highlight I'd share is that, the, that the, they, they mentioned at the meeting that there's going to be no new taxes or fees introduced in the, in the state budget this year. Uh, and they're projecting, I think I, I read up, I, I, list, I heard a, uh, a $10 billion surplus with another full pension payment, so those are the highlights. I think the rest came out, or will have come out uh, uh, this afternoon uh, in a press release, but anyway, that happened today. And that's all I have for new business. Um, and now open to the public again for any comments on anything that we've discussed or even haven't discussed. Jenny Derrick, staff in Sparta. Sorry, I know we want to get home. Just two quick I things. I don't want to get home. I like it here. Um, the, uh, I'm not making it, uh, I'm just asking the question. The zoning board is a statutory board and Kate Madison is on the board of elections, I believe. And I just want to make sure that that's not a conflict. And then when you're talking about budget, if, um, at the last planning board meeting, there was uh, several times that the planning board was asking or saying that they needed funds to be able to do the master plan review. So just putting those two things out there. Mm -hmm. yep. Didn't you also, you were also on the um, election board as well, right, Deputy Mayor? Uh, yeah, that's correct. And my understanding of the statute is, and the reason why, and it's actually by operation of statute, if you run for office, uh, you automatically have to come off the Board of Elections. Um, as this is not a candidacy that fits within the definition of that statute, someone can, my understanding, serve on a board. They're appointed. They're not elected. And so if, you're, if you, you can't, if, you know, the Board of Elections does elections. They don't do appointments. And so, um, you, know, you know, maybe legal counsel can weigh in, but... Uh, my understanding, there is no conflict with someone from the Board of Elections also serving as an appointed position. Um, now, if she were running as a candidate, that's a different story, and that's why um, I had to, uh, you know, I didn't have to do anything. The statute took care of it. I was automatically, as soon as I put in my paper for a candidacy for town council, that was it. Um, you know, I was off just by operation of filing the petition, so. What was the other question you asked? I can't remember. No, it was just a comment about. Oh, right, right. Okay. 
Um, anyone else from the public? Okay. May I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. May I have a second? I second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Right. Thank you for joining us today.